all right so now we start with the chapter the first chapter development in business environment trust me one of the most ignored chapters by ca final students and one of the most important chapters as well on an average look at your pm and you will find out that this chapter has a average weightage of 22 marks yes a comprising of almost 22% of your portion and for some reasons this chapter goes ignored probably the reason that it is more of theory oriented nonetheless so my focus here is to take you through the whole chapter of development in business environment which is obviously divided into a whole lot of parts so on that note the first part the first aspect if you look at your pm if you look at your uh, module the first aspect that you will find is tqm total quality management so this is the first fundamental that we are going to focus on so all the theory related to tqm is what you will find here all i need from you is just a book and a pen take a book take a pen keep on writing whatever i am telling you and things will set in your head ensure that you uh, give the output required in the examinations on that note i will start with tqm total quality management now before we start obviously we should know what exactly is total quality management so first thing is what is tqm remember one thing if there is any question on tqm ensure that you are writing the main meaning of that point you know so you will have tqm you will have jit just in time you will have life cycle costing so on and so forth so ensure that you are first writing the meaning which is what i will start with and then you will you know continue with the question that is being asked so that is how we will work out total quality uh, management so that stands for continuous improvement now see this is this is given you know if you are into any business any business say that you are into a pen manufacturing business you are into a shirt manufacturing business you manufacture mobiles you manufacture cars you make anything you will always want to be one step ahead of your competitors you will always be you will always want to be one step ahead of what your customers perceive you know that is what differentiated you know great people like henry ford and uh, steve jobs they thought ahead of their times one they thought more than what even the customers could perceive that they can be given so that that's what made them great and that's what made their product worldwide famous so total quality management is a process of continuous improvement the key word here is continuous improvement ensure that there is a continuous improvement in the process in the product in the services that you are going to give to your customers so total quality management stands for continuous improvement where where are you going to continuously improve in the products and the processes and the services that you are going to give to your customers so improvement when continuously on what on the quality of products processes services so say for example i am into coaching industry so i will have to improve keep on improving the services that i am giving to my student somebody else is in say, say call center uh, is also a service oriented activity so they will have to improve in terms of the service that they are going to provide products processes as i told you you know it can be anything it can be working of air conditioner how do you think yourself one step extra improve on the quality of the product improve on the quality of the process which is used to make that product and that is what tqm all about so naam kya diya hai as in what is the name the name is t q m what is tqm stand for total quality management now when you use the word total it means that the entire organization has to be focused on this one aspect of tqm so the whole supply chain the whole employee chain everybody has to focus and ensure that you are regularly into continuous improvement so total means the entire organization has to participate i have written here pun se lekar top management tak so you know it is not going to be that only one person is going to work on the you know quality aspect and others will not because then you will not get a complete product you will not get a complete service which is defective free so the total organize the total word total represents entire organizations everybody has to you know focus on that including the supply chain everybody including as i said the employees 
and that has to go on from the initial stage of the product to the maturity phase of the product. So initial stage when the product is first launched in the market to the end maturity phase. So when is the maturity phase when the product is almost going to be out of the market till the last breath you have to ensure that there is a TQM system for the whole product or process or service in which you are functioning. So TQM continuous improvement where in the quality of products and processes and services why is this name TQM given? Because it consists of total entire organization, tune se lekar top management tak, including the supply chain, the whole product life cycle from initial to maturity phase, every time, totally, the whole focus has to be on quality. What is quality? Products and services beyond specification. Umeed say dugna. So give the customer more than what he is expecting. Give the customer more than what he wants. And that is what quality is all about. Total quality will only be possible if there is a proper management. You know, till the time there is not proper management, you will not be able to deliver the top quality product. So there has to be proper management. So when you speak of money management, it is the planning, organizing, staffing, direction, control, something that you have studied uh, from way back. So this is what the meaning of TQM is. So any question related to TQM, just take two minutes, just write down this brief theory about TQM and then write the relevant answer required. So that's how your approach should be. TQM, continuous improvement in the quality of products and processes and services such that the whole product comes out to be defective free. Total means entire organization from pune to top management including the supply chain. So your creditors, your raw materials, suppliers, uh, your work in processors, everybody. Product life cycle to uh, the whole product life cycle from initial to maturity phase, everybody has to be focused in ensuring that quality is given which is beyond specification and with proper management, so planning, organizing, staffing, direction, control, everything is inbuilt in the product which is there. I hope the core definition is clear. Now let us understand the core concepts of TQM. So core concepts are exceed customer expectation and how is the performance going to be measured from customer perspective. So suppose you go out to take a mobile phone. So what are the customer perspectives there? Customer perspectives are a good camera quality. It can vary from people to people. So based on that, you will have to make different products. There will be something called as speed of the processor. There is something going to be the look of that whole mobile phone. So there are a lot of perceived things that the customer is going to look at. And what is the performance measurement as regards that and second how are you going to exceed the customer expectation by applying the concept of total quality management. So core concept says that your performance measurement from customer perspective should exceed customer expectation. How are you going to do that by applying what total quality management in your organization. So customer oriented or satisfaction at the same time that reduced cost. So whenever you are designing the product, whenever you are making the product, you have to ensure that cost is reduced at the same time without compromising any quality. You know, that's what makes you a, a good management accountant. So reduced cost at the same time, customer oriented or satisfaction and design and build quality product because that is what the customer is looking for. And in a competitive environment, which we are living if your product is not it you know as per customer specifications or beyond that your company probably will be closed down in no time because that's how the things are changing rapidly and we've seen a lot of examples right so design and build quality product customer satisfaction reduce cost are the core concepts of TQM how do you do that by ensuring that there is a quality control by ensuring there is a quality assurance, by ensuring there is quality management, quality control, QC, quality assurance, QA, quality management, QM. So how do you build a quality product? By three aspects, quality control, quality assurance, quality management. How do you build a quality product? By three aspects, 
quality control, quality assurance, quality management. So these are the three aspects which you have to keep in mind. Now quality control looks at the past. Remove the defectives which are there in every unit. So say for example, you made 100 units in the past of which three have been defective. You will find out the cause that why were they defective units. Ensure that there is a control measure applied and those defects are taken care of. So quality control looks at the past and ensures that the defective units are no more a part of your system. Then quality assurance which looks at the present. So whatever systems that are there in ensuring that the you know product is made up to the mark. So those systems should be in place and third is quality management which is more of future oriented which says that you should not stop you should continuously improve on the product quality. So how to design and build a product quality. So uh, let's go be, uh, back. Core concepts is giving performance measurement from customer perspective which exceed customer expectation by applying the concept of TQM. How do you do that? So customer satisfaction at reduced cost which is a very very fundamental objective. How do you do that? By designing and building a quality product. How do you do that? By ensuring three things. One, quality control. Second, quality assurance. Third, quality management. How do you control your quality? Past present future so quality control looks at the past remove the defective units which were there in the past by applying control measures and ensuring no more defects second quality assurance looks at the present and ensures that the systems are in place when the present uh, whole uh, manufacturing is done and third is quality management which is future oriented and at the same time ensures that there is continuous improvement in the product and we give the customer more than he expects by ensuring that all TQM measures are being applied in a proper manner. So now we are clear with what exactly is TQM, what are the core concepts of TQM. The third aspect is how do you implement a TQM. So implementation basically is nothing but your steps of TQM. So implementation nothing but steps of TQM. What are the steps of TQM? First form customer groups. So you will have to figure out who are your customers. You should know. As a businessman, my customer con hai. So first, you will have to find out who are your customers. Find out who are your customers and group them. So there, you will have customer groups. Find out what exactly are the customer expectations. What is he expecting from the product? At least you should know that because you know if you make a product and then if the customer is not happy with what you have given, then it will not make any sense. Okay. So customer groups customer expectations so you know you can have an example of something like a geo so geo was mainly focused on giving two important things one free voice calling and second enough data so these are the two things that they found out that that is what a customer is expecting from a sim card he is expecting that yeah, I have calling free mein ho jana chahiye. Dusra, I data free mein mil jana chahiye. Taki jahan pe bhi mera Wi-Fi na ho, I can have enough of data capacity which should not hinder me. Right? So those are the two aspects which a customer was expecting delivered. Customer groups, customer expectations. Third, product utilities. Whether the product is utilizable in terms of the customer expectations. Fourth, comparison or benchmarking. Whether Airtel or Vodafone is also giving these services. If yes, I have to be one step extra. So again, continuing with the example of Geo, free calling was not something which was given by Vodafone or Airtel. Or if it was given, it was a very exuberant rate. Comes Geo, ensures that it is beyond the benchmark, it is beyond the comparison. Again, the data that was given was 1 GB free, 2 GB free. Geo comes and ensures that gives free data. So comparison, benchmarking beyond your customer expectation. Then take the customer feedback whether the network was good, whether the data that was given was actually the 4G data which was promised. Take the customer feedback. If there is any negative, then ensure that you are improving on them by applying the TQM technique. So these are the steps that you have to follow while implementing TQM. One, customer form customer groups. Based on that, find out what are the expectations, give your product those utilities as per the expectations, then beat the benchmark or the comparison which is prevalent in the industry 
find out what the customer has given the feedback, find out the negative of them, improve on those negative feedbacks and ensure that the product is the best in the market. So that is what the steps of TQM is. Clear everybody? So TQM, TQM core concepts, uh, how do you build a product quality and steps of TQM. So these are the things so far done and dusted. Third, next in line is quality cost or cost of quality mark. This is very important. All the questions that we are doing, I'll tell you, keep on telling you time and again, are all taken from your PM practice manual. That is what the hardcore focus is. All right. So uh, PM module almost covering that. Quality cost uh, or cost of quality. Now this is a very, very landmark section as far as TQM is concerned. It to, you know, applying TQM is not the price of creating a quality product or service. It is the cost of not creating a quality product or service. Sir, kya confuse karna? It is not the price of creating a quality product or service. It is the cost of not creating a quality product or service. Agar quality product maine nahi banaya, to uske wajay se jo mujhe jurma na ya harja na sen karna padega, that is basically my quality cost. Not the cost that I am going to put in to ensure that the quality product is made. Yes, that is there. That is given. But if that quality is not given, then the cost arising because of that is the most crucial aspect of my quality cost or cost of quality. The best example being Volkswagen and Samsung. If you remember, if you know Samsung, uh, I think 7, Galaxy 7 or koi to uska product tha, had big battery issues. So, if the battery ka quality is not good, then in that case, you don't have to do much work. But because of poor battery quality, the mobile phone exploded and it had to withdraw such a huge bulk of you know, mobile phones and had to suffer a loss. So, that was the quality cost of not making a quality product. It is the cost of not creating a quality product or service. Yeah? So, as a result of not making a quality product, what happens is then you will have to rework of manufacturer item. Volkswagen and Samsung are the best example. Volkswagen first uh, fined, penalized for not conforming to the pollution norms which are there. So again, not giving the quality that is required in the market and uh, you know, you will have to incur such a big cost. So rework of manufacturer item. Second is retesting, third is reprocessing. So these are the things that you will have to incur, these are the costs that you will have to incur because you have not made a quality product. So rework of manufactured item, retesting, reprocessing. So this is what I, Samsung had to do, then he had to retest, he had to reprocess a good quality product. He had to come up with Samsung 8 as soon as possible in order to ensure that you know the whole trauma of 7 is left behind. Anyway, so that's what happens when you are not making a quality product. Rework, retest, reprocess. Moving on now, this quality cost is divided into four aspects. Uh, aspect 1, prevention cost. Aspect 2, appraisal cost. Aspect 3, internal failure cost. Uh, aspect 4, external failure cost. So, uh, institute's favorite question. What are the four quality costs that are there? So, prevention cost. Appraisal cost, internal failure, external failure. Prevention cost. Prevention. Before the product is finally made, what are the things that you should keep in mind? These are basically my control costs. Pele in ke upar control karlo. So that, so that the product comes out in the best quality. In the best quality. So the theme word here is quality. Quality engineering, quality training, quality audit, quality circle, design review. So, these are the prevention costs which will ensure that control is you know, there before ensuring that quality is given in the product that comes out. So, quality engineering, training, audit, quality circles, design review are my prevention costs which I will have to incur. So, these are all control aspects. Second is the appraisal. Now, see here uh, the quality has to be inbuilt in the product. So, from the raw material to the work in progress to uh, process to my finished goods at every stage I have to ensure that there is quality inbuilt in my product. Whereas, appraisal is looks around the product. 
it looks at the inspection which is not making the product it is after the product is made that they will you know inspect whether the product you know confirms to the specification whether the product is acceptable whether it is packaged properly whether the suppliers are verified or not so that is what appraisal cost is it is around it builds itself around the product this is more of from raw materials to wip to fg third internal failure internal failure external failure this are the two companies which have incurred these internal failure and external failure cost so if there is a internal failure of the product you will have to rework you will have to reinspect you will have to retest you will have to repair the theme word here is re rework reinspect retest and repair and if there is an external failure then in that case there is going to be a big revenue loss warranties uh, product liability all of that will have to be taken care of because if if you know my product is not good suppose as i said samsung galaxy 7 the product is not good i will obviously return it if it is returned then you will have to give me a good quality product again incurring extra cost product liability warranties and obviously then the market scenario will not be good for your product you will never recommend it to others which will result in revenue loss so these are the four dimension of quality cost prevention cost appraisal cost internal failure cost external failure cost as i said favorite question of institute so prevention quality engineering quality training quality audit quality circles design review second appraisal inspection related प्रोडक्ट के आजू बाजू का चीज प्रोडक्ट एक्सेप्टेंस पैकेजिंग बराबर हुआ है कि नहीं सप्लायर बराबर वेरीफाइड था कि नहीं इंटरनली रॉ मटेरियल डब्ल्यू आई पी एफ जी पूरा प्रोडक्ट बन गया है नाउ इफ देर इज एनी फेलियर इंटरनल फेलियर रिवर्क करो री इंस्पेक्ट करो री टेस्ट करो रिपेयर करो अगर इंटरनल नहीं है तो एक्सटर्नल फेलियर एक्सटर्नल फेलियर है तो चेक कि मेरे को प्रोडक्ट लाइबिलिटी हो जाएगा बिकॉज आई मे हैव टू यू नो गिव अव प्रोडक्ट or there may be a warranty issue wherein i will have to repair a particular product a, a part of a product and it is going to result in revenue loss because no more the customers are going to purchase my product which is the biggest loss which i am going to face all right so these are those aspects next the quality dimensions so next in line is dimensions of quality whenever you know we all say that are kya quality product hai क्या सही क्वालिटी दिया है क्या एक्सेलेंट काम किया है व्हेन डू यू से दैट यू विल से दैट व्हेन समथिंग इज गिवन टू यू मच मोर देन व्हाट वी एक्सपेक्टेड व्हेन अ प्रोडक्ट सरपासेस आर एक्सपेक्टेशंस वी कंसीडर दैट एज क्वालिटी यस व्हाट आर दोस डायमेंशंस ऑफ क्वालिटी व्हाट आर दोस डायमेंशंस ऑफ क्वालिटी सो व्हाट आर दोस डायमेंशंस ऑफ क्वालिटी परफॉर्मेंस फीचर्स रिलायबिलिटी रिस्पांस reputation aesthetics conformance durability and service so you know let's again take the example of a mobile phone so main mobile phone lene ko jaunga to main kya kya wo mobile phone mein dekhne wala hu is what is given here simple and straight forward i will see how quick you know it is 6 gb ram it is 4 gb ram so what is the performance of that mobile phone so performance is what i am going to see what are the features of that mobile phone features what is the reliability whether it will be you know working for 3 years 5 years 6 years how far can uh, you know the product uh, sustain itself response what has been the response of that mobile phone reputation of that company so say uh, apple has its own reputation vis a vis say uh, carbon will have its own reputation micromax will have its own reputation and accordingly people will perceive the quality aesthetics the build the feel the uh, you know the hardcoreness of that product is what the aesthetics is all about durability how durable it is service after sale service suppose if there is an issue then what will happen to my product so one plus three is facing this issue in terms of service i don't think so it has many service centers in india vis a vis say for example a samsung which would have n number of service centers so service and conformance conformance means jo packet mein likha tha wohi packet ke andar product mein hona chahiye whether it is conforming or not so those are the dimensions of quality 
which you have to focus on performance features, reliability, response, conformance, reputation, aesthetics, durability and service. Clear? These are dimensions of quality. Next in line is quality improvement process. How do you improve the quality? As I said, it is a never ending process. The first thing that we learned is it goes on throughout the product cycle from the introduction phase till the maturity phase. So, how do you improve that? So, quality improvement process is what you have to focus on. So, problem identification, you will identify what are the problems which your product has gone through. Suppose there are five problems. So, there is a product which has five problems. So, problem one, two, three, four, five. You will rank them according to how important it is in terms of the sales that it will uh, impact. So, first is P. So, you know, just a abbreviation for this is praise. So, praise is the abbreviation given for a six step quality improvement process. P stands for problem identification. Identify what are the problems in the whole product. Based on that, we will give a ranking that, okay, this is the first thing that will ha I will have to ensure that is taken care of. Then analyze. So, this is what I am going to analyze, you know, which has to be taken care of first. I, innovation. How do I innovate and ensure that all my problems are taken care of? So, by that innovation, I am looking for a solution. Once that solution is implemented, I will evaluate whether the action is effective or not. So, problem identification, area of customer dissatisfaction. Always the customer feedback is what we had written here. So, in the la in almost the second last step of steps of TQM, my customer satisfy uh, feedback will let me know what are the problems. So, problem will be identified, which will be ranked in priority of opportunities and problems. We will analyze them, find out an innovative solution to that problem, and then evaluate whether it is conforming to the way we have innovated and solved the issue. So, praise. Problem identification, ranking, analyze, innovation, solution, evaluation. This is the six step process that we will have to follow. Then six C's of TQM. So what are the six C's of TQM? Commitment, cooperation, control, culture, continuous improvement and customer requirement. These are the six C's of TQM. Just learn them. Commitment, cooperation, control, culture continuous improvement and customer requirement. I think somewhat uh, conforming to what all we have studied so far. So, what is the commitment that the product is given, how cooperative is the company in terms of product issues, control, uh, what is the culture, continuous improvement, whether it is there or not and whether it is adhering to the customer requirement. So, this is the first phase of TQM. Some more aspects left and we will be covered with almost all the theory that can be asked in your examinations in terms of your PM, past papers and your modules. All right, so the next aspect that we have to cover uh, for TQM is what now we are going to focus and with that we will be done with whole of TQM as far as your PM is concerned and as far as your exam orientedness is concerned. So, next is TQM by Deming. Deming was a, a management philosopher. He was considered as the father of quality control and in fact, you know, during the World War II times, he worked with a lot of Japanese companies and a lot of Japanese companies credit their process improvement, quality improvement to Deming to such an extent that they have also incorporated something called as Deming Prize from the year 1951. 
so what is the philosophy of deming he you know deviated from the traditional philosophy which says that majority of quality issues are on account of the workers he said that no it is incorrect the poor quality is just on account of 15% uh, attributable to the workers whereas it is 85% attributable to the process system and the poor management so it is the top level poor management which has the poor understanding of the product and processes which is unfortunately inculcated into the workers and if this is improved majority of the workers will also work well so correct system problems create an environment that promotes quality at the top level once that is done automatically the workers will start working in an improved manner so that is tqm by uh, deming so he was the father of quality control as i said and this is the philosophy on which he worked and then he developed a deming 14 points uh, of which we are just going to focus on the seven uh, main points so these are the seven points which were enunciated by deming uh, which speaks of the fundamentals of quality control he said that the short term things which are there in the process should be removed and the focus should be on the long term planning institute leadership there has to be a leadership sense of leadership in the workers which are working so that their job that they are doing is not any uh, focused on any biasness then there has to be on the job training if the workers are not trained on a regular basis then in that case the competitors who may have that extra edge will uh, take away the business that we have single supplier for one item suppose there is this pen uh, i need one plastic in order to make one pen so i should order that plastic which is my raw material only from one supplier you know, it should not be the case that there is the same you know for making the same pen the plastic is coming from 10 different suppliers no that should not be the case so single supplier for one item then be ready to adopt new philosophy the products will change the services will change the process will change especially the technology will change and as a result the new philosophy will be inculcated which has to you know you have to be ready to adopt that as well education and self improvement you will have to improve as far as your workers are concerned as far as your systems are concerned and then finally involve everyone transformation is everyone's job you know as we saw total the word total specifies everyone in the whole uh, company has to focus on that so seven of the 14 points of deming long term planning institute leadership give on the job training single supplier for one item be ready to adopt new philosophy education and self improvement and involve everyone transformation is everyone's job so these are the seven points which you can remember and write in case asked in the examination then there is a deming wheel so wheel you know go round and round and round so these are continual activities you know, look at the center of this wheel and you will find that these are continual activities on a regular basis the companies have to ensure that these continual activities are performed in a very 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 regular manner so what are these continual activities it is plan do check act plan what have what should you plan you have to plan the basic policies of the company what are the uh, suppliers who are going to send the pro, uh, the raw materials at your premises how is the process which is to be followed by the supplier in case the supplier is not good then what is the policy of the company in case the employee is not doing well what is the policy of the company so plan what you have to plan the basic policy then once things are planned then you will have to do so what is do practice through operations you will have to educate you will have to practice what you have planned in a continual manner check awareness survey and assessment you have to keep on assessing yourself you know suppose now you have to give your examination so before giving your examinations you study for the first time then you try when you you know when you are revising you try to recollect things whether you remember everything or not so what are you doing you are checking yourself there is a awareness there has to be awareness survey there has to be a assessment of things that are being done and finally act what is act it is review your policy in case the policy needs any change again go with your plan do check act and then finally 
corrective action has to be taken. So once the policy is reviewed, your actions are done, then in that case you will have to take corrective action and this whole dimming wheel will complete. So plan, do, check, act. Plan, do, check, act is what you will have to continuously do, continual activities in order to reach the pinnacle of the product that you are trying to make. So plan, make your basic policy, do. You will have to work out on the basic policy through operations, then check, check yourself, assess yourself, review, take corrective action if required, then recreate the basic policy, so on and so forth. So this is called as the Deming wheel or also called as Sheward cycle. So this is how it works. Next in line is Six Sigma, something that you have heard uh, a lot, something you would have studied in your SN strategic management at your IPCC level. So this it was developed by Bill Smith of Motorola in 1986, then adopted by G. Whirlpool uh, to a very large extent. And again, this also focuses on one thing, TQM, Total Quality Management, in general also focuses on the one thing and that is continuous improvement. So Six Sigma, Sigma defines is nothing but the variations, the deviations that may happen when you are making a final product. So those deviations should not happen and that is what Six Sigma tells you all about. So it is again focused on continuous improvement. How will you focus on continuous improvement by MAIC, measure, analyze, improve, control. Measure the issues which are there in your product, then analyze how you can improve and then control those deficiencies and things will be without any errors or without any defects. So MAIC, measure, analyze, improve, control. Once you measure, analyze, improve and control, then in that case Six Sigma will set in your process, in your DNA and once that is done, then the product will be defect free. Get it in your organizational culture. Now what is Six Sigma? It basically tells you that 99.999998% accuracy should be there in the products that you are making. So which speaks of 0.002 defects per million. That's it. 0.002 defects per million. Technically speaking, 3.4 parts per million should be defective. Other than that, everything should conform to the quality that you have thought of. So quality of focus on quality of products and services develops the bottom line improvement because the less are the issues with the products, the more chances that your productivity and your net profit will increase. So it will develop your bottom line. And what is Six Sigma? It is 3.4 parts per million is the defect. What is 5233-6120-6680-7308-5376-90,000? Like Sir, are we able, are we supposed to remember this? Not necessary. Yes, you have to remember the last one which is Six Sigma. And you have to remember the first one, which is one sigma, six lakh ninety thousand defects per million. So out of ten lakh products that you are making, six lakh ninety will be defective. Is one sigma, three point four is six sigma. So there is hardly any scope for you to make any uh, probably defective work. So that clarity or that uh, hundred percent accuracy is what six sigma demands. And once you are through with that then in that case quality is to an optimum level which will never then become an issue. Your customers are satisfied and end of the day probably that is what you want as a businessman. So that this is what Six Sigma. Now what are the benefits of that? Obviously the customer will be satisfied, there will be increased productivity because then you don't have to rework, retest, re-engineer. Total defect free and improved process flow. So that these are the benefits, so customer satisfied, increased productivity, defect free products and improved process flow. So all in all uh, a win-win situation for everybody. Alright, so this is what Six Sigma is, main things to remember, continuous improvement, Motorola 1986, MAIC, measure, analyze, improve, control, uh, measure the issues that are there, analyze them to ensure that you improve and then put the controls in process and then that will, uh, that should become a part of your organizational culture. This is what Six Sigma is all about. As in exam, you have to remember six, which is 3.4 parts per million, and one, which is 690,000 parts per million. So that is how it works. Benefits of Six Sigma, customer satisfaction, increased productivity, total effect free, and improved process flow. 
Now, what are the four P's of quality improvement? What are the four P's of quality improvement? People, process, problem, preparation. These are the four P's. Uh, just uh, keep in mind, again, not that important and uh, you can take it through. So, these are the four P's, people, process, problem and preparation. So, this is whole theory of PPM. I hope you have written it. If not, I hope you understood it uh, all well. So, any question in the examination, just ensure as far as TQM is concerned, this is the process that you are going to follow. All right then, next in line is target costing. So yes, we are going to start with target costing again. The focus is PM. The PM theory is what we are focusing on exam orientedness. Okay? So here we start with the concept. What is target cost? Target cost. What is target? I thought that I have costing over 75 marks. That is my target. How much will Either 80 or 60 or 20 is the reality. But you have to keep target to keep target. Right? So, that is the way even companies approach the, their product costing. So, they will keep a target cost and they will have to ensure that the total cost does not exceed the target cost because if it does, then in that case probably you are not making that much of profit or rather you may even incur losses. So, it becomes very important for the companies nowadays to ensure that they keep a target cost in their mind and if that target cost is breached, then in that case, they may incur losses. So, target cost means setting a cost well in advance before, in fact, you know, starting the work of your whole uh, product that you are going to manufacture. Kind of a standard cost. This is standard cost, you know, you will ask your uh, production managers, your labor managers, your uh, expenditure managers to tell you what exactly the total cost that they are going to incur for their respective management in the same way they are giving you the target. So target cost developed in the year 1960s in Japan. Now how does the whole concept work? This is how it works. So you will look at the product requirement and you will do a market analysis. Right? So you will analyze ke bhai ye product ka kitna requirement hai. Suppose my pen is the product that I am going to sell. So, kitna market mein requirement hai ye pen ka and based on that I will analyze the market and find out what is the controlling market price of that product. Now, target cost usually is kept in uh, companies or by the companies which sell products which are already prevalent in the market. Because agar now mein pen bana raha hu, so already pen ka ek market hai, well established market. Agar mein bags bana raho, bags ka already well established market hai. So now I am entering into a market which is already established, which already has a selling price which is controlled by the market demand and supply. So I cannot dictate my terms, uh, you know, as far as selling price is concerned. So selling price mere hath mein hai nahi. Correct? Profit mere ko kitna on karna hai, mere ko pata hai. So here selling price which is the target price is kind of my market determined, market determined kar raha hai already ki bhai kitna selling price hona chahiye. Saam mein what is the target profit that I am expecting on sales. Let's assume that target price is 100. I am expecting a profit of 25% on sales giving me a target cost of 75 rupees. So only if I am able to make my product in 75 rupees and sell it for 100 rupees, will I be able to achieve the profit margin that I have uh, thought of which is 25% on my sales. So here target cost has to be adhered to. So how do I get my target cost? I will see the product requirement, I will do the market analysis, find out the market selling price, I will see what is the profit that I am looking for in my business. This will give us the target cost. Once we have the target cost, now I will start with my product uh, specifications and I will start with the production of my product. Now when I start with the production of my product, I will have to ensure that I do not breach this target cost. So say for example, my target cost is 75. 75 is my target cost. 
whereas I am now starting with my whole production. So all the costs that I am going to incur I will accumulate and ensure that it does not breach the mark of 75 rupees which is my target cost only then will I be able to reach the desired selling price and my desired net profit. Alright, so concept says do the product requirement and market analysis, find out the target price, determine the target profit which will give us the target cost. This is what we are coming up to. So target cost ek bar gaya, fir production chalu karo and production jab chalu karoge to ensure that you are adhering to the costs that you have thought of. So here explore the product design, product explore the design alternatives, do the supply revaluation, do proper designing, ensure that there is proper management in place. All of this should be done at your uh, level where you are going to start the production. So here I am going to start my production. So I will have to ensure that meko pata hai target cost 75, meko pata hai target cost 75. So I will evaluate my suppliers and ensure ki mera jo supplier se raw material aane wala tha uske liye raw material ka jo cost maine soch ke rakha tha i have to ensure that it does not exceed or breach that if it does then i will have to tell my supplier to reduce his selling price accordingly it becomes my cost so explore product in terms of supplier evaluation in terms of proper designing if a product is properly designed then also it helps in reduction of cost and thirdly proper management so unless you know if management is proper then unnecessary costs are always reduced down so prop supplier evaluation uh, proper design proper management is what i have to ensure and then i will be able to reach to my target cost so how do I reach to target cost? By exploring product and process design alternatives which includes supplier evaluation, proper design, proper management. I will complete my production. Once the production is ready, I will see that whether it meets my target cost or not. If it doesn't, I will enter into a continuous cost reduction exercise. So this is how the whole concept of target cost is and almost every company nowadays follows this with the increasing competition. So, Concept, product requirement and market analysis ke basis pe selling price milega. I will decide my profit will give us target cost. Woh system hai aap te jau. And this is what you have to write in your exams in a proper manner. Jaise hi target cost mila, I will start exploring the product and process design alternatives. Once that is done, I will see supplier evaluation. That includes probably supplier evaluation, proper design and proper management. Once that is done, the production will be complete. Production is complete. I do not have to stop there as far as cost is concerned. I will still keep on incurring the cost reduction exercise. So this is the whole concept of target cost. Continuing here, this is just a process that we have made as far as target cost is concerned. So select set the target selling price which is based on customer expectation or is market determined as I said. Find out your profit margin, target selling price minus your required profit margin will give you something called as target cost. Then estimate the cost of the new product you will see whether the cost that you have thought matches the target cost or not. If it matches, good. If it doesn't, then in that case you will have to do something called as cost reduction. And once you start with cost reduction, every component and every production activity will have to be analyzed to ensure that the cost meets the target cost or rather is even below that, keeping the quality aspects in mind. Now, here again, you know, here we ended on cost reduction, here also we are ending on cost reduction. So, if my target cost doesn't meet, then in that case I will have to incur cost, I will, you know, have to exercise cost reduction. What exactly are the cost reduction tools and this is where we come. So, here cost reduction tools is divided into two aspects. One is my value engineering and the other is value analysis. What is value engineering? Value engineering means, you know, designing your product in such a way that unnecessary things are taken out from the product. So say for example, there is a pen. Now this pen has certain elements in it. There is a one element which is there, but even if it is not there, it is not adding value plus it is not giving any extra customer satisfaction. Remove that product from that design, from your product design. So, what is value engineering? Opportunities to modify design 
as a result of which there is a increase in sorry uh, decrease in cost without reducing quality mind you without reducing quality so opportunities to modify design which results in decrease cost without reducing product quality and the second is value analysis which is detect eliminate and minimize the non value added activities so you will detect eliminate and minimize the non value added activities what is value added and non value added activities activities which result in value addition from the customer perceivedness will become a value added activity so for example something like a blackberry now blackberry phones used to be there which were purchased by the business class people now when a business class people when a business class person is purchasing a mobile he is looking at aspects like emails better email facility he is looking at aspects like word powerpoint he is looking at all of those aesthetics as far as the mobile phone is concerned even if the camera quality is okay okay it's, it doesn't matter to him so value addition for a blackberry business phone for that matter is having properly synchronized emails properly synchronized word powerpoint and uh, microsoft office whereas if you ask a teenager then probably is not concerned with all of these aspects is more concerned with the camera quality is more concerned with the speed uh, or the gaming aspect so this is where you will have to find out what the customer perceives as a value added and a non value added act activity so if there is a non value added activity which is there in our product ensure to eliminate it which will ensure that there is a reduction in cost right so value analysis will be done wherein you will detect first detect the nva try to eliminate if you cannot eliminate at least minimize because nvas are not non value added activities are not going to result in increased customer satisfaction or for that matter increased profit so detect eliminate and minimize nva that you are going to do through value analysis and as far as quality of the product is concerned that is to be improved with reduced in cost will be done through value engineering right so what is this value engineering or value added activities eliminate unnecessary functions from production process better product design substitution of parts and fourth is better way of doing things so you will eliminate the unnecessary functions which are there in the production process there's no point keeping them your pro the product should be designed in a proper manner the parts substitution of parts so all the parts which are costly and which can be substituted with cheaper parts should be introduced and things should be done in a proper manner so once this is done i think my cost reduction will be done and i will be able to reach to the target cost in a very smooth manner so eliminate unnecessary functions from production process so which is nothing but detect eliminate minimize and be better product design substitute products which are costly with products which parts which are cheaper and do things in a better way so better way of doing things so these are the things to be adhered in mind and ensure that cost reduction is taken care of last in line is kaizen kaizen costing what is this kaizen kaizen also is a japanese term means continuous improvement in your product so cost reduction steps used subsequent to issuing a new product design so subsequent to issuing a new product design so again when a product goes for the manufacturing process at such point in time you have to ensure that the product cost is minimized and how are you going to do that by using kaizen costing which is nothing but continuous improvement so you will have to keep on improving things in such a manner that there is a cost reduction at the same time the product is designed as per the specifications waste is eliminated which is nothing but a repetition which we have already done so there is elimination there is you know any waste or which is being done eliminate that at production level at assembly level at distribution level at all levels waste should be eliminated this is what kaizen costing says which says what continuous improvement in the product continuous improvement in the process all right so all aspects of an entity's performance at all levels should ensure that continuous improvement is done and it should be done throughout the product life cycle so from the introduction stage to the end uh, of the product so growth stage maturity stage at all levels kaizen costing which is continuous improvement should be done 
in order to be competitive as far as cost is concerned. So, that is your uh, Kaizen costing and the last is the differentiation of the way target costing approaches and the way traditional cost used to be. So, traditional cost used to be like you know you find out your product specification, find out your product design, then estimate cost and then you will find out the target cost and then you will have the target price, right. So, how does this system work? First, find out what exactly is your product specification, okay. Based on that you will start designing the product, you have designed the product. Once that product is designed then you will uh, estimate the cost. So, after you know every step is being performed already and then you find out your cost. Then based on that you add your markup and you find out your selling price. So, this is how the traditional costing used to be. Now, it is more of backward integration. First, you tell me what is going to be the target price. Based on that, I will see what is my target profit based on the margins that I am planning. This will give me target cost and then I will design the product. Are you understanding? So, first if you traditionally it used to be product specification it used to start then design then find out the cost here first find out the cost then design the product how do you find the, then so here it was cost then find out the profit then find out the target price whereas in, in new ways it is first find out the target price which will give you the target profit find out the target cost and then you start designing the product so this is the main differentiation between a target cost and traditional cost. Are we clear? So, this is the whole aspect of target cost. Last aspect which is left is your uh, benefits of target cost. So, any everything which is marked in green is nothing but your benefits of target cost. So, here target costing helps in supplier evaluation because now you have a target cost you have to ensure that supplier gives you the raw materials at the correct cost it results in proper designing unnecessarily elimination is done of unnecessary functions proper management is done so there has to be a proper management then uh, value added activities are increased non value added activities are decreased totally eliminated and this is how the whole system of target costing will look like i hope everybody is clear yes target costing almost all questions as regards your PM is covered, just write it down, focus, done industry. Thank you. Life cycle costing is now what we are going to start with. Product life cycle, life cycle costing, life cycle. Naam, naam dekho, naam dekho. Kabhi bhi naam se jane ka, things will become much more easier. So, life cycle what is life ka cycle philosophical question is what i am asking you life ka cycle is you born then baad mein apan bade hote hai school mein jate hai school ke baad college college ke baad job job ke baad shaadi shaadi ke baad bacche bacche ke baad unka life cycle chalu hota hai by the time we are jo aaya hai usko jana hai in the same way in the same way even products have their life cycle theek hai na so product bhi initially launch hota hai वही प्रोडक्ट जो लॉन्च होता है इनिशियली धीरे 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 पिकअप करता है फिर एक ऐसा टाइम आता है व्हेन यू नो इट ग्रोज ह्यूमंगसली देन मैच्योरिटी एंड देन फाइनली जो आया है उसको जाना है सो डिक्लाइन दैट इज द प्रोडक्ट विल बी आउट फ्रॉम द मार्केट सो दैट्स हाउ द प्रोडक्ट लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग इज दैट इट टेल्स यू the start point and the end point and what it does is now we are doing costing we are not doing philosophy so costing may when the product is started or when the product is launched tab se lekar even pre launched tab se lekar product jab tak end hone wala hai total duration and the total cost during that duration is called as life cycle costing pure life mein product ke pure life mein total uska kitna cost incur hone wala hai usko accumulate karega ek idea lega ki total sales kitna hoga wohi duration mein mere ko idea aayega ki total ye product mein ko kitna profitability dene wala hai during its life cycle is what life cycle costing is what life cycle so that's how it works Life cycle costing is a pattern of expenditure, sales, revenue and profit over the period from new idea generation. When the idea generated, then my costs will be incurred. 
क्यों क्योंकि प्रोडक्ट को डेवलप करना पड़ेगा एंड टिल द डिलीशन ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट प्रोडक्ट गेम ओवर हो जाता है तब तक उसके जितने भी टोटल कॉस्ट होने वाले हैं ना ऑल दैट इज फॉर्मिंग अ पार्ट ऑफ लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग मैंने इधर देखो एक लीक चीज लिखा है टोल नाका टोल नाका पे कभी जाना यू नो यू विल फाइंड बैंड्रा वर्ली सी लिंक स्पेशली या ये इधर दहिसर चेक नाका कोई भी जाओगे ना उधर वो लोग बहुत बड़े बोर्ड लगाए हुए हैं वो बोर्ड्स पे वो लोग बताते हैं कि भाई ये प्रोजेक्ट का लाइफ साइकिल है ये हमारे हाईवे का लाइफ साइकिल है कब वो स्टार्ट हुआ था कब एंड है उस पर वो लोग डिस्काउंटेड कैश फ्लोज भी निकालते हैं कितना कलेक्शन हुआ है कितना और होने वाला है ऑल ऑफ दैट डिटेल इज गिविन दे नोट करना कभी प्रोजेक्ट लाइफ साइकिल इज वॉट दे फॉलो सो वो लोग को भी पता चाहिए ना जी एंड ऑफ द डे ये जो भी हाईवे और ये सब बनाते हैं आई बी एन ऑल ऑफ दीज इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कंपनी दे आर गिविन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फॉर सर्टन एक्स नंबर ऑफ इयर्स तो उनको क्या बोलता है गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट उनको बोलता है आई को बोलता है कि देखो तुमको आज ये हाईवे बनाने का है सो so, ये इतना हाईवे बनाने का है ये हाईवे बनाने को तुमको दो साल लगेगा हम तुमको टोटल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट दे रहे हैं दस साल का वो दस साल में तुम हाईवे भी बनाओ वो टोल का कलेक्शन भी करो वो सब तुम्हारे पास रखो एवरीथिंग इज योर्स एक्सक्लूडिंग से एक्स अमाउंट बाकी सब तुम्हारा है तो वो टाइम पे हाईवे भी बनाओ उतने टाइम के लिए हाईवे भी बनाओ वो ही हाईवे के ड्यूरेशन में उतना कॉस्ट भी इंकर करो और टोल से कलेक्शन भी करो तो तुमको फिर आपने जितना हुआ उतना तुम्हारा प्रॉफिट नहीं हुआ उतना तुम्हारा लॉस एज द केस में भी सो यू यूल फाइंड दिस वर्ड बेसिकली दे एंड इन जनरल एवरी बिजनेस मैन ऑल्सो डज दैट सो वॉट डू दे डू ट्रैक एंड अक्यूमुलेट कॉस्ट ओवर प्रोडक्ट एंटायर लाइफ साइकिल आई हैव ऑलवेज टोल्ड यू स्टार्टिंग से फर्स्ट लेक्चर से मैं तुम लोग को बोल रहा हूँ पीएम और पेन पेपर साथ में रखने का एवरीथिंग यू विल बी एबल टू रिलेट टू द पीएम तो पीएम के लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग के जितने भी क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर्स है ना एवरीथिंग इज कवर्ड इन दिस चार्ट दैट आई एम गोइंग टू टेक यू थ्रू ठीक है सो वॉट डज लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग डू टू स्टार्ट विद इज अटर्न ऑफ एक्सपेंडिचर सेल्स मतलब सब मुझे फाइन करना है मुझे उसका पैटर्न फाइन करना है इन टर्म्स ऑफ एक्सपेंडिचर के भाई इनिशियली कितना एक्सपेंडिचर होगा फिर डेवलपमेंट पे कितना एक्सपेंडिचर होगा फिर ग्रोथ होने पे तभी मेरा एक्सपेंडिचर स्टेबिलाईज हो जाएगा मेच्योरिटी पे क्या होगा यू नो डिक्लाइन स्टेज पे क्या होने वाला एवरी एक्सपेंडिचर आई वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट प्रॉब्ली अपन लोग जब सम्स करेंगे ना लाइफ साइकिल का तो उसमें वो डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर भी यू नो डे टेक इन टू कंसिडरेशन तो बारह साल अगर मेरा चलने वाला है तो बारह साल का टोटल कितना कॉस्ट होने वाला है उसको मैं डिस्काउंट कर दूंगा फ्यूचर बेसिस पे ऑल ऑफ दैट टेक इन टूगेदर will give me a pattern of expenditure in the same way pattern of sales in the same way pattern of revenue and accordingly i will get the profit for or rather from new idea generation to deletion of the product so it tracks and accumulates costs it tracks and accumulates costs where over products entire life cycle from inception matlab start se lekar abandonment tak इंसेप्शन से लेकर अबंडनमेंट तक ये सब चीज को ट्रैक करेगा वो अक्यूमुलेट प्रोडक्ट कॉस्ट्स ओवर वैल्यू चेन सो जो भी कंपनी का वैल्यू चेन रहेगा ना एवरी टेन ईयर सो वैल्यू चेन विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम प्रोडक्ट डिजाइन विल गो टू डेवलपमेंट देन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग होगा फिर उसका मार्केटिंग करना पड़ेगा आफ्टर सेल सर्विस एंड फाइनली डिस्पोज ऑफ करना पड़ेगा तो वो वैल्यू चेन में जितना भी कॉस्ट इंकर होने वाला है वो सब मेरे को अक्यूमुलेट एंड ट्रैक करना पड़ेगा इज वॉट लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग से सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ थियोरी दिस इज वॉट यू आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू राइट अभी क्लियर वी विल मूव ऑन नाउ इन टर्म्स ऑफ डायग्रामेटिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन वॉट आर द कॉस्ट इंकर्ड यूरो हाउ इज द होल लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग डिवाइडेड इट इज डिवाइडेड इन टू फोर फेजेस इट इज डिवाइडेड इन टू फोर फेजेस सो रिलेशनशिप ऑफ सेल्स एंड प्रोडक्ट कॉस्ट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग इज डिवाइडेड इन टू फोर स्टेजेस स्टेज वन इज इंट्रोडक्शन स्टेज टू इज ग्रोथ स्टेज थ्री इज मच्योरिटी एंड स्टेज फोर इज डिक्लाइन इफ यू सी योर आई हेव ऑल्सो मेड अ ग्राफ सो दिस ग्राफ विल टेल यू दैट देखो डेवलपमेंट हुआ फिर बाद में उसका इंट्रोडक्शन हुआ ये ग्रीन लाइन फिर ग्रोथ फिर मेच्योरिटी एंड फिर फाइनली डिक्लाइन सो दैट इज हाउ द होल डिविजन ऑफ अ प्रोडक्ट लाइफ साइकिल प्रॉब्ली इज करेक्ट नाउ हाउ इज इट फीचर सो वॉट आर द फीचर्स ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन इट इज फीचर बाय अ स्लो और कैरेक्टराइज बाय अ स्लो सेल्स ग्रोथ भाई अभी तो लॉन्च किया है यार प्रोडक्ट इमीजिएटली थोड़ी ना ये सब प्रोडक्ट मेरा एप्पल है कि लॉन्च किया और यू नो धूम मचा देगा टाइम लगेगा then फिर बाद में ग्रोथ रैपिड मार्केट एक्सेप्टेंस वंस द इंट्रोडक्शन इज डन वंस पीपल स्टार्ट यूजिंग योर प्रोडक्ट देर इज अ वर्ड ऑफ माउथ पब्लिसिटी विच एपन्स इन एनी प्रोडक्ट माइंड यू रैपिड मार्केट एक्सेप्टेंस इज वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन सो ये दीज ई कॉमर्स इंडस्ट्रीज दैट्स दे हैव ग्रोन सो बिग सो फास्ट
बहुत रैपिड मार्केट एक्सेप्टेंस आता है तब तक ज्यादा कॉम्पिटिटर भी नहीं होता है सो इसके लिए द ग्रोथ इज इज प्रीडी क्विक देन मेच्योरिटी इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय स्लो स्लो डाउन इन ग्रोथ रेट ग्रोथ हो रहा है पर स्लो वे पे यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो से फॉर एग्जाम्पल पहले मेरा ग्रोथ हो रहा है हंड्रेड परसेंट से So, मेरा आज अगर 100 का सेल्स है कल 200 का सेल्स हो जाएगा कल 200 का सेल्स है परसों 400 का सेल्स हो जाएगा फिर 800 का सेल्स हो जाएगा 100 परसेंट ग्रोथ हो रहा है सो देर विल बी अ फेज व्हेन देर इज द ग्रोथ इज यू नो मोर 100 200 उससे भी ज्यादा होती जाएगा मेच्योरिटी में भी ग्रोथ होगा बट प्रोबेबली शायद सिक्सटी का ग्रोथ हो उससे भी कम हो सो so, थोड़ा सा ग्रोथ होगा पर कम ग्रोथ होगा ग्रोथ तो नहीं है दोनों स्टेज पे मैच्योरिटी स्टेज पे भी ग्रोथ होगा बट ग्रोथ रेट में स्लो डाउन हो जाएगा वी अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट इज मैच्योरिटी एंड फाइनली वी हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज डिक्लाइन तब ग्रोथ बंद गिरना चालू जब तुम्हारा सेल्स गिरना चालू हो जाए खतरे की घंटी डिक्लाइन स्टेज इज वेरी यू आर आई होप आई एम क्लियर सो इंट्रोडक्शन कैरेक्टराइज बाय स्लो सेल्स ग्रोथ रैपिड मार्केट एक्सेप्टेंस देन ग्रोथ maturity slow down in growth rate decline sharp downward drift so then the product is on the verge of decline on the verge of closure again now just focus on introduction so introduction mein slow sales growth hota hai product is about to be launched to so, abhi to sales kuch hai hi nahi hardly kuch hai product abhi launch hone wala hai to so, profit hoga ki nahi hoga sir obviously nahi hoga so profit is Non existence and ये time पे costs क्या incur होते हैं मेरे ये time पे costs क्या incur होता है basically research and development because अभी तो नया नया आया है so मेरे को test करना है how things are working design promotional cost these are the major costs which are incurred in your introduction stage if you open your PM वन टू थ्री there are three different questions that they have asked the characteristics then what is the profitability what are the sales in your introduction stage and finally what are the cost incurred in various stages all three in one all right so all the questions tackled together so introduction is characterized by a slow sales growth product is just to be launched so but obvious goes without saying that the profit will be not in existence what are the costs that are you are going to majorly incur they are r&d design promotional cost we move on to cut to and cut to is my growth stage the most acceptable stage or the most awaited stage for any company any business it is characterized by rapid market acceptance and then sales and profits will rise and competition enters because abhi growth stage mein as i said the competition has just entered correct so sales great huge increase profits huge increase that is how it is characterized by as a growth market and because there is a huge increase in the sales production has to increase and therefore in such a stage manufacturing and production costs are at the highest continuing with my maturity stage maturity stage growth is there but rate is slower as compared to a growth phase now your sales also increase but at a declining rate as i said product support costs are more focused here so because r and d design to obviously done and dusted have so now your product support cost that you know whether product is acceptable or not and the moment this goes down we move on to the decline stage where there is a sharp downward drift As a result, there is a drop in sales. यहाँ पे sales increase है, but slow rate पे यहाँ पे drop in sales probably because cheaper and better substitutes are available, and then your product will be scrapped out from the market. So this is how the whole life cycle is probably characterized in terms of a graphical representation. This is how it works. So sales volume. Development stage पे तो sales volume कुछ भी नहीं होगा. Introduction stage पे जब product launch होने वाला है, just मेरा सेल्स होना चालू हुआ है ग्रोथ स्टेज पे सी लुक एट द ग्रोथ रेट लुक एट द ग्रोथ रेट समझ रहे हो यहाँ पे भी ग्रोथ है बट एक प्लेटू फॉर्म में काइंड ऑफ यहाँ पे स्टीप ग्रोथ यहाँ पे प्लेटू फॉर्म में एंड यहाँ पे तो गिरना चालू एंड प्रॉब्लली दैट्स हाउ दिस होल थिंग इज कैरेक्टराइज सर हाउ डज इट हेल्प हाउ डज लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग हेल्प इट हेल्प इट हेल्प यू टू एनालाइज के प्रोडक्ट का क्या स्कोप रहेगा उसका टोटल कॉस्ट क्या होने वाला है पूरे उसके लाइफ साइकिल के हिसाब से मेरे को टोटल कॉस्ट पता चल जाएगा ना उसके पूरे ड्यूरेशन का तो दैट विल ऑल्सो हेल्प मी इन माई प्राइजिंग तो भाई मेरे को भाई इतना कॉस्ट रिकवर करने का तो उतना मेरे को प्राइस रखना पड़ेगा अकॉर्डिंगली आई विल टेक डिसीजन सो डीज ईज ऑफ डिसीजन मेकिंग देर and finally i'll be able to review my product on a regular basis uh, because of that uh, life cycle costing that i have done 
all right so this is how the whole system is uh, characterized as far as life cycle costing is concerned pattern of expenditure sales revenue and profit new idea generation to deletion of product wo pura aayega fir baad mein sab cost ko accumulate karo ek karo inception se abandonment tak accumulate karo value chain mein jitne bhi cost hai sabko dekh lo product design development marketing manufacturing service disposal tak then characterize it into four stages introduction growth maturity and decline now this can be characterized as planting a seed fir baad mein wo seed se sprout aur leaves aayega fir roots ekdam strong ho jayega and finally प्लांट फूल फूल सीड प्लांट करना पड़ेगा फिर वो फूल स्प्राउट होगा लीव आएगा रूट स्ट्रॉन्ग हो जाएगा एंड फाइनली प्लांट शट डाउन हो जाएगा प्लांट बंद हो जाएगा प्लांट मतलब प्लांट एंड मशीनरी वाला नहीं फूल पत्ते वाला okay so that's about introduction growth maturity decline introduction slow sales growth product to be launched to profit non existence r&d promotional cost rapid market acceptance सेल्स बढ़ेगा प्रॉफिट बढ़ेगा कंपटीशन एंटर होने का चालू ये टाइम पे मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोडक्शन का सबसे ज्यादा ग्रोथ होगा बट स्लो डाउन हो जाएगा सेल्स इंक्रीज डिक्लाइनिंग रेट पर प्रोडक्ट कॉस्ट मेरा मैक्सिमम डिक्लाइन शार्प डाउनलोड फिट ड्रिफ ड्रॉप इन सेल्स गेम ओवर चीपर सब्सिट्यूट आ गया है स्क्रैप एंड दट इट वर्क दैट इज वेर माई लाइफ साइकिल कॉस्टिंग कंक्लूड थैंक यू value chain analysis vca is the chapter that we are starting it was developed by michael porter in the year 1980 so uh, you can say this is a recent introduction which is there if you open your pm you will find around 9 uh, to 10 questions relating to vca some typical questions come which which are they what are they that that i'll explain you so now what exactly is value chain analysis so you know we've heard of the term supply chain supply chain management logistics mein hota hai correct similar to that so similar to that is your value chain analysis every business has a beginning point and has a ending point what is the beginning point say for example mereko ye pen manufacture karne ka hai barabar hai so what will be the beginning point ye pen manufacture karne ke liye mereko pehle raw material lana padega correct usko fir baad mein convert karna padega production mein dalna padega finally finished goods aayega finished goods pe game khatam hote hai nahi सेल तो करना है ना तो सेल करना पड़ेगा सेल करके गेम खत्म होता है नहीं आफ्टर सेल्स भी करना पड़ेगा इफ यू मिस आउट ऑन एनी पार्ट देन यू नो यू विल नॉट गेट योर कस्टमर बैक सो हाउ डज दिस वर्क दिस स्टार्ट्स विद अ रॉ मटेरियल दिस स्टार्ट्स विद अ रॉ मटेरियल एंड एंड विद द फाइनल प्रोडक्ट एंड अगेन आई एम टेलिंग यू नॉट एंड विद द फाइनल प्रोडक्ट इट इज इंक्लूसिव ऑफ आफ्टर सेल सर्विस एज वेल सो एट एवरी पॉइंट इन टाइम देर इज अ वैल्यू एडिशन टू द प्रोडक्ट so how that value addition can be improved how that value addition can be cost optimized is what this value chain analysis is developed by mr michael porter so value chain what is that it is value creating activities what is the value creating activities as i said you raw material se uska production hoga production se fg aayega fg se sales hoga sales se after sales hoga and ye after sales pe you will stop so after sales hua after sales hua uske baad usko acha laga to wapas se order dega wapas se order diya to mere ko aur raw material khareedne ka aur production aur fg aur sales aur after sales so on and so forth so there is a chain which is being set and at every chain there is a value addition 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 that value addition is to be monitored and how in that value addition you can develop more cost effective practices is what value chain analysis is all about all right so uh, what is that it is internal process or activities a company performs to design produce market deliver and support its product design abhi mere ko product banane ka hai say for example mere ko koi finished goods ka order aaya to finished goods ke order ke liye mere ko pehle raw material lana padega रॉ मटेरियल के भी पहले मेरे को उसका डिजाइन करना पड़ेगा दैट हाउ द प्रोडक्ट शुड लुक लाइक राइट व्हाट शुड बी द इट्स लुक व्हाट शुड बी इट्स फील दैट इज कॉल्ड द एस्थेटिक्स ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट सो वो एस्थेटिक्स मेरे को समझना पड़ेगा एंड दैट एस्थेटिक्स इज नथिंग बट द डिजाइनिंग ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट सो दैट इफ देयर इज एनी इशू एट द डिजाइनिंग स्टेज 
देन प्रॉब्ली वहां पे ही मैं चीजों को वर्कआउट कर दू एट अ प्रॉपर कॉस्ट एफिशिएंट लेवल बिकॉज समझो फॉर एग्जांपल डिजाइनिंग फाइनल हो गया एंड देन यू नो लेटर ऑन स्टेज पे प्रोडक्शन फिनिश गुड स्टेज पे मैं बोलता हूँ यार इसका डिजाइन बराबर नहीं है then it is not going to make sense and you know the whole thing will go for a toss you know, i just heard a interview sometime back of mr rajiv bajaj uh, the second successor of bajaj bajaj auto hamara bajaj if you know he said that you know they never bajaj uh, industries never had the auto the scooter that they made they never had something called as the r and d department something called as the designing department which he feels was a big negative so now Every company will ensure that first it is designing the product. तो मेरा design ये मेरे को pen बनाने का एक simple सा example लेता हूँ मेरे को watch बनाने का दूसरा simple example मेरे को shirt बनाने का designing has to be ready. So design आएगा वो design के बाद मैं क्या करेगा raw material मंगाएगा और raw material से फिर finally goods को produce करेगा ऐसे ही गुड्स बिक जाएगा नो आई विल हैव टू मार्केट इट मार्केट करने के बाद आई विल गेट सेल्स ऑर्डर सेल्स ऑर्डर दिया तो डिलीवर करना पड़ेगा एंड एज आई सोड यू टोल्ड यू यू नो इट इज नॉट दैट डिलीवरिंग द गुड्स विल एंड योर जॉब योर जॉब विल एंड only with the support services because if you are not able to give that and in that case you are not going to get reorders and probably things may stop there so if you closely observe these are all internal processes so internal process or activities of a company परफॉर्म्स टू डिजाइनिंग के ऊपर एक वैल्यू एडिशन हो रहा है फिर प्रोड्यूस होता है तो वैल्यू एडिशन हुआ फिर मार्केट पे फिर डिलीवर फिर सपोर्ट ऑल ऑफ दैट इज योर वैल्यू चेन ऑल ऑफ दैट इज बेसिकली चेन विच इज क्रिएटिंग वैल्यू टू द प्रोडक्ट सो वैल्यू चेन एनालिसिस इज हाउ द टर्म वॉज पॉइंट बाय माइकल पोर्टर न दिस वैल्यू चेन कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू मेन थिंग्स वन इज कॉल्ड एज द प्राइमरी एक्टिविटी एंड द अदर इज कॉल्ड एज द support activity what is your primary activity directly involved in transforming inputs to outputs so jahan pe bhi input se output convert karne ka hai na that is called as my primary activity and support kya hoga wo input se output convert karne ke liye jo support activities chahiye such staff handling and all of that that basically is my support activity so one is primary and the other is support activity primary activity directly involved in transforming inputs to outputs and support may those with support primary activity is handled by an organization staff functions now primary activities may kya aata hai what is my primary activity directly involved in transforming inputs to outputs this in consists of sim double o sim mo theek hai service inbound logistics so service matlab after sales kab se main wohi bata raha hu tum log ko Inbound logistics मतलब material handling and warehousing. So मेरे को design करने के बाद goods produce करने का है. Produce करने के लिए मैं बोलेगा भाई raw material मंगवाओ. Raw material आएगा. मेरे go down में रहेगा. I will have to warehouse it for some time if it is not to be used immediately. So that material handling and warehouse, all of that is nothing but my inbound logistics, which is a part of primary activity. मार्केटिंग एंड सेल्स बट ऑब्वियस वो सब चीज आ गया इनबाउंड लॉजिस्टिक्स आ गया है उसके बाद में मेरे को मार्केटिंग करना पड़ेगा तब भी मेरा प्रोडक्ट बिकने वाला है सो मार्केटिंग एंड सेल्स इन रिलेशन उसमें देर इज कम्युनिकेशन प्राइसिंग चैनल मैनेजमेंट ऑल ऑफ दैट इज देर फाइनली देर इज ऑपरेशन इन कन्वर्जन ऑफ इनपुट टू आउटपुट एंड देन देर इज आउट बाउंड लॉजिस्टिक्स प्रोडक्ट बन गया पर प्रोडक्ट बनने के बाद अगेन मेरे को उस कस्टमर के घर तक उसके फैक्ट्री uh, तक उसके ऑफिस तक एज द केस में भी वो प्रोडक्ट को पहुंचाना पड़ेगा दैट इज कॉल्ड एज आउटबाउंड लॉजिस्टिक्स इज डिफरेंट मार्केटिंग एंड सेल्स इज डिफरेंट एंड आउटबाउंड लॉजिस्टिक्स इज डिफरेंट लॉजिस्टिक्स इज मोर कंसर्न विद ट्रांसपोर्टिंग द गुड फ्रॉम द प्लेस ऑफ माई फैक्ट्री वेर गुड हैव बीन प्रोड्यूस टू द एंड कंज्यूमर सो दिस इज वेर द प्राइमरी एक्टिविटीज आर सर्विस इनबाउंड लॉजिस्टिक्स एज ए सेट मटीरियल हैंडलिंग एंड वेयर हाउसिंग marketing and sales communication pricing and channel management operations uh, and find outbound logistics and what are my support activities these are my support activities first is procurement so mere ko pehle procurement karna padega na raw material ka so procurement technology so these again if you closely observe these are like the inherent uh, activities which are there in making the product these are like the finishing one so 
टेक्नोलॉजी हो गया सिलेक्शन प्रमोशन प्लेसमेंट विच इज माई एच आर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंस मैनेजमेंट प्लानिंग ऑफ फाइनेंस ऑल ऑफ दैट दीज आर नथिंग बट माई सपोर्ट एक्टिविटीज सो एज सच प्राइमरी एक्टिविटीज आर द हार्ड कोर एक्टिविटीज जिसके बिना प्रोडक्ट बनने से लेकर प्रोडक्ट बिकने से लेकर आफ्टर you सेल्स know, सब चीज के लिए मेरे को प्राइमरी एक्टिविटी चाहिए फिर बाद में ये ये करने के लिए मुझे साथ साथ में क्या मैनेज करने के लिए क्या चाहिए इज माई सपोर्ट एक्टिविटीज तो टेक्नोलॉजी मेरे पास अच्छा होना चाहिए तो प्रोडक्शन फटाफट होगा मेरे पास जो पब्लिक काम करने वाले हैं उसका सिलेक्शन प्रमोशन प्लेसमेंट बराबर होना चाहिए तो एच आर रॉ मटीरियल जो मंगा है दैट शुड बी फ्रॉम इन इन गुड प्रॉपर कंडीशन माई प्रोक्योरमेंट एंड फाइनली मैनेजमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंस सो दिस इज हाउ द होल सिस्टम वर्क सो दिस इज माई प्राइमरी एक्टिविटी दिस इज माई सपोर्ट सपोर्ट एक्टिविटी that is how the things look all right so primary activity and support uh, activity just continuing with this whole thing so uh, industry value chain and those within the firm are ab ye pura industry value chain dekhoge to pehle tum log supplier ko phone karoge wo supplier tumhare paas maal pahunchayega फिर तुम यू नो वंस यू हैव कंप्लीटेड द होल थिंग यू विल गिव इट टू द डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर से वो बायर को जाएगा बायर के पास से either it will be disposed of it will be recycled as the case may be so this is like the industry value chain industry value chain mein you are purchasing it from the supplier you are the firm which is producing it then you will give it somebody who will do the distribution part then the retailing and buyer part finally the goods are disposed of and recycled so that is how it works so this is my industry value chain this industry value chain may we are focused on the firm that is what we are so we are focused on the firm to ye firm kya kaam karne wala hai firm r&d karega as i said either to sabse best example likh sakte ho tum log bajaj auto they didn't have it now they obviously have it no all of the big companies have the r&d r&d ke basis pe mai designing karega फिर प्रोडक्शन फिर मार्केटिंग फिर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फिर सिस्टम चेन राइट दिस इज हाउ इट वर्क्स आर एन डी डिजाइन प्रोडक्शन मार्केटिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड सर्विस सो सर्विस में इंस्टॉलेशन रिपेयर एवरीथिंग इज एंड ऑफ इंक्लूडेड देन ये प्राइमरी है तो मेरे को सपोर्ट के लिए क्या क्या चाहिए प्रोक्योरमेंट वी सॉइट देर टेक्नोलॉजी वी सॉइट देर एच आर सिलेक्शन प्रमोशन अप्रेजल वी सॉइट देर and finance we saw it there so this is how it broadly looks like it is again just uh, recollecting this is the linked set of value creating activities from basic raw material to final component and end use of product or service that is what value chain is you can write this as a, a defining line if it is asked in the question in the exam three useful strategic framework what are the three useful strategic framework इंडस्ट्री का स्ट्रक्चर एनालिसिस स्कोर कॉम्पिटेंसी सेगमेंटेशन एनालिसिस इंडस्ट्री स्ट्रक्चर एनालिसिस द इंडस्ट्री इन विच यू आर ऑपरेटिंग उसका वैल्यू चेन एस सच क्या है एंड योर वैल्यू चेन सो वेदर यू आर कंप्लाइंग विद दैट और नॉट कोर कॉम्पिटेंसी एवरी प्रोडक्ट एवरी कंपनी हैज टू हैव दैट एंड सेगमेंटेशन एनालिसिस हाउ आर यू सेगमेंटिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ द होल थिंग से फॉर एग्जाम्पल सेगमेंट वाइज हाउ आर यू परफॉर्मिंग वीजा वी और कॉम्पिटिटर्स इज वॉट the useful strategic frameworks can be used for your value chain analysis so industry structure analysis core competency and segmentation analysis the main job is again identify remove unnecessary components components substitution simplify product design and increase efficiency these are general points which you would have any which case noticed in other things as well so you know what i am doing is just uh, getting a connect between those two things so identify remove unnecessary components component substitution simplify product design and increase efficiency and finally what are the steps of value chain analysis it is internal cost analysis internal differentiation vertical linkage what is this internal cost analysis determine sources of profitability and relative cost position so uh, internally see internally how you are performing and how better methodologies can be implemented to ensure that cost is reduced to the best level so in case there are steps of vca internal cost analysis karne ka pehle fir baad mein tum kaise khud ko differentiate karte ho ab bhi ek product launch hua hai uber eats in fact tum log ka bhi first uh, exam hai so you wouldn't know it but uber eats karke ek chalu hua hai so they are looking so how is it differentiating how is uber eats differentiating itself from its competitors is what is to be seen and finally is the vertical linkage 
सो so, स्टेप्स में पहले इंटरनल कॉस्ट एनालिसिस करो भाई मेरा क्या क्या चेन है उसके अंदर क्या क्या कॉस्ट लगता है उसके बाद में जो डिफरेंशिएटिंग फैक्टर्स है उसको आइडेंटिफाई करो एंड फाइनली इज द वर्टिकल लिंकेज फिर एक को लिंक करते जाओ रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन एक्सटर्नल सप्लायर कस्टमर मैक्स वैल्यू फॉर दर कस्टमर्स एंड नेमसेल्स सो दिस इज हाउ द चेन विल वर्क आउट फॉर यू सो दैट्स इट सो दिस इज वैल्यू चेन एनालिसिस फोकस ऑलवेज कस्टमर सेटिस्फैक्शन decrease in cost always that is going to be the focus increase in customer satisfaction and decrease in cost now i identified certain two three questions uh, from your pm itself so there is one question number 44 and question number 45 gray pm page 1.38 question 44 question 45 page 1.38 question 44 is a subset of question 45 तो क्वेश्चन 45 कर लिया ना तो क्वेश्चन 44 करने की जरूरत नहीं है वो सब सेम चीज उसी में आने वाला है ठीक है सो नाउ वी आर ऑन टू क्वेश्चन 45 पेज 1.38 ऑफ योर पीएम आई थॉट वी विल टैकल इट टुगेदर इफ यू सी द ब्लू मार्किंग्स दैट इज व्हाट दिस क्वेश्चन 45 इज सो इन वैल्यू चेन एनालिसिस बिजनेस एक्टिविटीज आर क्लासिफाइड इनटू प्राइमरी एंड सपोर्ट एक्टिविटीज क्लासिफाई द फॉलोइंग अंडर मोर अप्रोप्रिएट एक्टिविटीज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन अब पांच मार्क के लिए क्वेश्चन नंबर 1 में आ सकता है ये and you will have no clue what is a primary activity and what is a support activity if not studied but if you studied understood then you know samajh lo paanch mark jeb mein that's how it works ya to zero fir tukke pe kuch mila to theek otherwise you know you can get good marks first is order processing and distribution see where can you see order processing and distribution this is where i see order processing and distribution and that is my primary activity next in line installation repair and parts replacement can i say it is a service oriented thing and if it is a service oriented thing it falls into primary activity so just have to remember these certain points next purchase of raw material and other consumable store is a part of your procurement procurement is a part of your support next transforming inputs into final products so transforming inputs into final product so main primary activity ka to kaam hi wo hai so that by default is a primary activity selection promotion appraisal and uh, employee functions is your hr in general this is what their role is this is what their role is so it becomes a support activity then there is general management sorry material handling and uh, warehousing inbound logistics usi ko bolte hai material handling and warehousing inbound logistics inbound logistics is primary activity general management planning general things fi support activity and then communication pricing and channel management is your pricing activity is a primary activity why because this is where it falls communication pricing and channel management a part of marketing and sales a part of primary activity so this is how you have to identify and get full marks there is one more question on page question 15 page 1.149 so 1.149 is what you can go towards that question is like that abc limited is engaged in the business of manufacturing branded garments it has single manufacturing facility at ludhiana raw material is supplied by various suppliers majority of its revenue comes from export to eurozone and us to strengthen its position further in the global market it is planning to enhance quality and provide assurance through long term warranty for the coming years company has set objective to reduce quality cost in each of the primary activities in its value chain state the primary activities as per porter's value chain analysis in the value chain of a b c with the description so these are the primary activities what is its job of primary activities to directly involved in transforming inputs to outputs what are its bifurcation with brief description so simmo is the brief is the bifurcation simmo service installation repairs etc inbound logistics inbound logistics mein material aaya usko warehouse karo marketing and sales communication pricing channel management operations finish goods se fp me convert karne ke liye jo operational activities lagegi and finally outbound logistics which is finish goods to sales distribution so inbound logistics material handling outbound logistics sending the finished goods to the final customer final end point and that is where we can say that these are the five activities that so with this we complete that section c theory part as well and you know primary secondary is what you have to keep support is what you have to keep in mind and that is how this looks we see a value chain analysis by porter
Okay, so next in line is cost control and cost reduction. As the name suggests, one is to control the cost and the other is to reduce it actually. So, you know, more dynamic is obviously cost reduction because there you will actually see the uh, cost being reduced as far as various material labor overheads are concerned. Whereas cost control, it will set its budget, budget it will set its own standard and then uh, it will evaluate based on that how the cost can be controlled. So just to going with the uh, meaning first in, so involves here what is cost control? It involves continuous comparison with actual cost of actual cost with the standards and budget. See this is more focused on the budgetary control aspect. So there will be a budget or standards made and you will compare it with the actual cost and see how that cost can, actual cost can be controlled vis-a-vis -vis your standard or budget uh, which is made. But as far as reduction is concerned, it involves real and permanent reduction. So there you will actually see the impact of a reduced cost at the same time the quality being still maintained and the increase in net profit. Why? Because there is a real and permanent reduction in the cost of products which are being manufactured. So that cost saving uh, can be through production, through distribution channel, through sales and distribution channel, it can be through any other function possible. Then for cost control it establishes cost standards whereas in cost reduction it ensures reduction in cost using techniques of value analysis, quality measure, market research etc. So if there is a you know here in, in cost reduction, you are focused on reduction in cost. So you will have to use certain techniques which is quality analysis, quality measure, market research, there are other cost reduction techniques also which you are going to see. But there again as I said, permanent and real reduction in cost is the focus. Now we will just focus on cost control aspect. Continuous comparison of actual with standards, established cost standards. As I said, you know, here your more focus is on budgetary aspects up a budgetary system, a standard cost system, see whether it can be controlled or not, put uh, preventive measures to ensure that costs are in uh, control as far as your standard is concerned. There is a competitive analysis of actual with the standards. So again, you know, time and again it is the same thing which is coming up, actual with standards, established cost standard, competitive analysis of actual with standard. So preventive function as I said, there is just a temporary saving in cost because it is just a control, which, control measure which we are taking. Here the focus is on the past behavior. Why? Because budget is also a past behavior analysis and it is it is, uh, it's, this is less dynamic in nature, that is more dynamic in nature. Correct? Now coming back to cost reduction, cost reduction is, is uh, huge and results in real uh, permanent reduction. So this ensures reduction in cost using techniques of value analysis, quality measure market research, this is more of a corrective function. When do you take corrective action when something is done? So now you want to uh, correct it and uh, give focus on the uh, reduction as far as cost saving is concerned. Finds low cost substitute, how do you reduce cost? One of the ways is by finding up substitutes. Realistic saving in cost is what happens in cost reduction. Focus on future behavior and it is obviously more dynamic in nature and therefore it is focusing on the future behavior of costs, correct? Now, what are the cost reduction techniques that can be taken? That can be through economic batch quantity, kind of a economic order quantity. Your purchase scheduling should be in a proper manner. So, say uh, there is a supplier. So, you have to tell the supplier and you would know your sales demand. Then you will know your production schedules. So, based on your production schedules, based on your sales demand, based on the seasonality, based on how your market operates, you will have to ensure that the purchase scheduling is done in a proper manner. Automation is the need of the art. The whole world is uh, doing this and so you have to do. Once you do automation, there will be a reduction as well because probably things which were you were doing manually was taking more time as the same time was incurring a higher cost. Now that will result into automation. A prime example can be ATM. So in ATM previously there used to be a lot of cashiers. Now the cashier's job is almost done and dusted. The ATM can take care of that. So automation. So ATM is a prime example. Quality control, if you design it properly, if there is a quality control, then in that case training and development value analysis, inventory control, all of these measures which you know the, the chapters that we are studying are nothing but your cost reduction techniques which you are using. Now just a small example. Taking wherein we have to classify either cost 
control or cost control or cost reduction let's see if we are able to do that or not so if it is a preventive function so preventive function not dynamic it will always be cost control if you, if you see here if you see here then preventive function is covered here cost control then is corrective function corrective function is cost reduction again i think we've already clarified that cost and compared with cost exceed budget or standard it is budget and standard will always be cost control measures to increase productivity will be your cost reduction because that is more dynamic that is more looking at you know increasing productivity provision for proper storage whether storage is is done in a proper manner or not uh, will be your cost control more of process oriented things value analysis will be your cost reduction and challenge is the standard met see your cost control is just focusing on standard and budget now this is challenging that's that standard that you have said will always be your cost reduction so this is how the classification work again you open your pm you will have the question on this classification and this is how it stands so this is about cost control and cost reduction in case you get a distinguish or a, a, a mean an explanation or you are asked for cost reduction technique this is how you have to answer then one there is one more question in your pm application of cost control in material cost so we will just quickly focus that as well so application of cost control in material cost you have to first define responsibility for every function then coordination this is more of a, a strategic management answer proper coordination between various departments purchasing function should be centralized so that there is no loss or wastage and things are ordered only as per the requirements proper storage facility so that there is no loss in terms of storage uh, issues and lastly system of stock control is very essential so once these things are done again cost control can be used as a measure to uh, improve your overall cost as far as material is concerned so define responsibility who is responsible for the material aspect then there should be a proper coordination between various department the production department should tell how many good, uh, units are to be purchased the purchase department should be very much linked with your synced with your supplier purchasing function as i said should be centralized storage should be done so once the purchase is done it comes into your factory warehouse then proper storage facility so that there is no loss on account of that and finally the system of stock control and you will be done with your cost control uh, as far as material cost is concerned all right so this is a small function that you have to focus three four two to three questions is what you have for all right so now jit just in time everybody is very much aware of this you might be very aware sir q faq fa iske liye kyunki aap padhai bhi to aise hi karte ho just in time pehle kaun padh ke rakhega pehle padha to fir bhi yaad kisko rehta hai barabar ye nahi specially theory audit law be wafa raat ko rati din ko safa you will not remember anything as far as uh, theory subjects are कंसर्न और इनफैक्ट कॉस्टिंग ओवर थियोरी हो गया है किसी का भी थियोरी किसको याद रहता है सर लास्ट मोमेंट पे एग्जाम के दिन पे लास्ट दो घंटा पढ़ लेंगे तीन घंटा पढ़ लेंगे जितना आया उतना ठीक नहीं आया तो भी ठीक देखा जाएगा एनी विच केस सो कमिंग बैक टू द मेन पॉइंट दिस इज वॉट द फंडामेंटल कंपनीज आर ऑल्सो नाउ यूजिंग जस्ट इन टाइम सी आज की तारीख में है ना स्पेस का जगह का कितना ज्यादा वैल्यू है नो बड़ी एल्स अदर देन एटलीस्ट मुंबई कर एक स्क्वायर फीट एरिया लेने का है वो लेने के लिए भी दस बार सोचना पड़ेगा ऐसा हालत हो गया है बॉम्बे के रियल एस्टेट मार्केट का क्यों सो so, मेरे पास स्टोरेज के लिए जगह नहीं है मेरे को नहीं चाहिए कि मैं ज्यादा माल यहाँ पे स्टोर करके रखू क्योंकि वो स्टोर करूंगा तो वो स्टोर करने की वजह से वो मेरे को एक नया वेयर हाउस लेना पड़ेगा जहां पे मैं स्टोर करूंगा एक तो पहली बार तो उसका मेरा कॉस्ट जाएगा दूसरा उसके जैसे मेरा जो पैसा अटक गया है वो उसके ऊपर जो इंटरेस्ट कमा सकता था अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट बोल जाएगा हाँ ये करने की वजह से कुछ कॉस्ट बढ़ेगा सो वो कॉस्ट बेनिफिट एनालिसिस करने के बाद मैं फाइनली डिसाइड करूंगा वेदर आई टू गो हेड विद जे आई टी और नॉट नाउ कमिंग बैक टू द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ जे आई टी जस्ट इन टाइम मतलब जितना जब जरूरत है उतना तभी ऑर्डर करो 
सो आई विल कॉल माई प्रोडक्शन मैनेजर जैसे ही मेरा प्रोडक्शन मैनेजर मेरे को बोलता है कि ये 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 प्रोड्यूस करने का है इमीजिएटली तभी का तभी मैं मेरे सप्लायर को बोलूंगा कि चल भाई माल बेच दे रॉ मटेरियल बेच दे मुझे मेरे को प्रोडक्शन करने का सो दैट अननेसेसरी स्टॉक पाइल अप नहीं होगा आई यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड वो स्टॉक पाइल अप नहीं होगा तो अननेसेसरी मेरे को स्टॉक के लिए जगह देने का जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगा यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग उसके वजह से मेरा अपॉर्चुनिटी कॉस्ट बच जाएगा Are you understanding? So that is what this whole just-in-time process is. It wants to streamline production process. How product by introducing a production and inventory management system that purchases, purchases and production of material and parts will be only as needed. Job chahiye tab karne ka order raw material ko uske alawa nahi. Correct? So that is what just-in-time is. So this is what you will have to write down. Agar exam me aata hai to. क्यों कर रहे हैं उससे क्या होगा वेस्ट एलिमिनेट हो जाएगा कई बार क्या होता है पता है कि अपन ऑर्डर कर देते हैं जोश जोश में फिर मालूम पड़ा वो प्रोडक्शन बहुत टाइम के बाद उस चीज का ऑर्डर आया तब तक वो कई बार वेस्ट हो जाता है ऑब्सोलिट हो जाता है टॉक्सिक हो जाता है तो मेक सेंस सो एलिमिनेट वेस्ट रिड्यूस इन्वेंट्रीज मेरा पाइलअप नहीं होगा स्ट्रॉन्ग सप्लाई रिलेशनशिप अभी यहाँ पे सप्लाई रिलेशनशिप अच्छा होगा वाई बिकॉज आई विल यू नो जब भी मुझे जरूरत पड़ेगा मैं इमीजिएटली सप्लायर को कॉल करूंगा तो आई विल बी इन रेगुलर टच विद माई सप्लायर समझ रहे हो देज एम्प्लॉय इन्वॉल्वमेंट एम्प्लॉय विल हैव टू बी ऑन देर टूल्स ऐसा नहीं चल रहा ऑर्डर कर दिया अभी आराम कर दे नो प्रोडक्शन आया ऑर्डर करने का है अकॉर्डिंगली थिंग्स विल वर्क डेवलप कस्टमर फोकस प्रोग्राम सो अकॉर्डिंगली उस हिसाब से अगर कस्टमर को कुछ कस्टमाइजेशन चाहिए कोई प्रोडक्ट में तो फिर भी मैं उसी हिसाब से रॉ मटेरियल ऊपर नीचे मंगा सकता हूँ ना पहले से ही रॉ मटेरियल मंगा दिया फिर कस्टमर ने कुछ अपना कस्टमाइजेशन दिया तो वो तो वेस्ट जाएगा ना यार डिक्रीज ओवर हेड कॉस्ट तो, तो अभी मैंने तुमको बताया कि स्टोरेज के लिए जगह कम नहीं जरूरत पड़ेगा नॉल ऑफ दैट बेटर प्रोडक्शन एंड स्क्रैप रिपोर्टिंग उस हिसाब से मुझे पता चल जाएगा भाई कितना एक्चुअल स्क्रैप हो रहा है क्योंकि अभी मंगा है अभी प्रोडक्शन किया तो अभी जो स्क्रैप गया है वो सामने सामने दिख जाएगा एलिमिनेशन ऑफ नॉन वैल्यू एडेड एक्टिविटीज कोई भी नॉन वैल्यू एडेड एक्टिविटी रहेगा वो भी मैं फिर मंगाऊंगा ही नहीं अकॉर्डिंगलीमिनेटेड सो फोकस पॉइंट ये है एडवांटेजेस ऑफ जे आई टी पूछा तो भी ये लिख सकते हो एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव से फीचर्स ऑफ जे आई टी पूछा तो फिर भी ये लिख सकते हो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है बट आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड यू नो वॉट इज दी होल रियल इंटेंट एंड इट वर्क इट वर्क इन प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ इन लॉट ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग कंपनीज आर स्टार्टेड अडॉप्टिंग जे आई टी जगह नहीं है यार रखू कि तो मेरे को तो जग मार के जे आई टी इंट्रोड्यूस करने के पड़ेगा द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट यू डू वेन यू वॉन्ट टू इम्प्लीमेंट जे आई टी इज हैव इन्फॉर्मेशन सिस्टम विच इज डायरेक्टली लिंक विद योर सप्लायर अगर तुम्हारा सप्लायर बढ़िया नहीं है ना देन यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू इम्प्लीमेंट योर जस्ट इन टाइम सिस्टम so the first thing that you are going to do is have a very good supplier and you are going to link your information system with the information system of your supplier jaise hi mere ko production ka yahan pe order aaya na usko udhar ting 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 ek notification jana chahiye chal bhai apne ko ye itna itna raw material ye wali company ko bechne ka hai you know tum log ne kabhi hotel mein gaye khana khane ko to kai baar hota hai ek jo screen rehta hai to tum log ne kuch order diya na aajkal to ipads pe order lete hai so what you will do is ipad pe tum log order करोगे सीधा वो किचन में और एक स्क्रीन लगा हुआ है ऑटोमेटिकली आएगा भाई ये बेन, ये बेंच बोल रहा हूं। ये टेबल से ये मेनू का ऑर्डर आया है आई अंडरस्टैंडिंग सो वो टैब पे मैंने ऑर्डर दिया वो उधर लिंक्ड है किसके साथ किचन के साथ वैसे ही यहाँ पे मेरा प्रोडक्शन का ऑर्डर दिया मेरी कंपनी में वो लिंक्ड है सप्लायर के साथ ईआरपी सिस्टम है आजकल तो सैप है सो दैट इज नॉट अग डी लैट ऑल सो इवन ईज अवेयर ऑफ वॉट थिंग्स ऑफ वर्किंग आई एम अवेयर जस्ट इन टाइम पॉलिसी बोथ आर है स्टेप्स फॉर जे आई टी जस्ट इन टाइम इंट्रोड्यूस करने के लिए said, सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट मेरे लिए है सप्लायर सप्लायर को बराबर इवेल्युएट करने का हो सके उतना सप्लायर आजू बाजू में ही रखने का सो दैट यू नो जब यू नो एंड मोमेंट पे भी कुछ लाना पड़े सो वी कैन सेंड आर पीपल एंड गेट इट सप्लायर असिस्टेंस वेरी मच ने इन्फॉर्मेशन सिस्टम शुड बी लिंक एंड डायरेक्ट डिलीवरी उसको बोलने का भाई जैसे माल का ऑर्डर आया इमीजिएटली डिलीवरी कर देने का ना एट टाइम्स क्या होता है सपोज उसने डिलीवरी दिया एंड डिलीवरी देने के बाद वी रियलाइज दैट यार इसमें आज से ज्यादा तो डिफेक्टिव माल है सो वॉट वी विल डू इज वी विल सेंड आर एग्जीक्यूटिव टू आर सप्लायर प्रिमाइस समझ रहे हो वहां पे अपने को सप्लायर का क्या चाहिए असिस्टेंस के भाई देख हम लोग के आदमी लोग वहां पे आएंगे पहले चेक कर लेंगे जो रॉ मटेरियल हम लोग तुम लोग से मंगवा रहे हैं वो सही है कि नहीं फिर ही बोलेंगे भाई तू डिलीवरी कर दे सो दैट इज दैट वी मे रिक्वायर द असिस्टेंस एंड देन वी विल टेल हम के डायरेक्ट डिलीवरी उसी हिसाब से 
send my executive to supplier, supplier ke ex, uh, go down major ke, okay, cross check kar lega, jo maal kharaab hai, usko bahar, jo achcha hai, usko bolenge, thik hai, good to go, delivery kar do, maal pahunch gaya. Usse kya hoga? Decrease in amount of WIP, defects kam ho jayega, I am tension free. You understanding? Benefits and losses of JIT, there has to be a cost benefit. Agar khali benefit hi hai, to to 100% sab logi apply, apply kar dega usko. But kuch benefits hai, kuch losses hai, dekhte hai. परचेस कॉस्ट बढ़ जाएगा अभी सप्लायर बोलेगा देख यार तेरे लिए मैं तू मेरे सर पे बैठा है तभी तो यू नो आई एम ऑन माय टोज फॉर यू तो जो परचेस कॉस्ट है उसे मैं थोड़ा ज्यादा लेगा थोड़ा ही लेगा पर थोड़ा ज्यादा लेगा यार बनता है फिर स्टॉक आउट कॉस्ट मेरा बढ़ जाएगा सपोज एकदम इमीडिएटली ऑर्डर आया और मेरे पास वो स्टॉक मैंने ऑर्डर किया सप्लायर के पास नहीं है या मैं उतना सक्षम नहीं हूं कि मैं इतना जल्दी बना सकू स्टॉक आउट होगा यू नो द कस्टमर में गो एंड सो ऑन सो वो भी एक रिस्क है सामने ऑर्डरिंग कॉस्ट बढ़ जाएगा बार बार ऑर्डर करूंगा ना मैं और प्रोडक्शन ऑर्डर आया मेरे को फाइनल गुड्स का ऑर्डर किया मैंने सप्लायर को तो ऐसा नहीं स्टॉक पाइल अब इमीडिएटली ऑर्डर करते रहूंगा तो ऑर्डरिंग कॉस्ट मेरा बढ़ जाएगा बट सामने क्या बचेगा स्टोरेज कॉस्ट उसका झंझट नहीं कैरिंग कॉस्ट कुछ मतलब मेरा फटा करा नहीं है कुछ भी पैसा ये कॉस्ट बेनिफिट कॉस्ट बेनिफिट कॉस्ट बेनिफिट एनालिसिस आई विल डू एंड आई विल सी वेदर जस्ट इन टाइम इज अ सूटेबल थिंग फॉर मी और इट इज Not suitable. So, ये पूरा एनालिसिस करने के बाद मुझे आइडिया आ जाएगा ऑल राइट सो अभी क्लियर नेक्स्ट इज जे आई टी अप्रोच फॉर रिड्यूसिंग डब्ल्यू आई पी इन्वेंट्री सो दो अप्रोच मैं कैन बैन कार्ड है एंड दूसरा है वर्किंग सेल्स वॉट इज दिस कैन बैन कार्ड कैन बैन कार्ड मतलब क्या होता है सपोज एक मशीन है तो दो एक और एक दो मशीन है पहले क्या होता था कि मशीन है तो जो मशीन ए को ऑपरेट कर रहा है और दूसरा कोई मशीन बी को ऑपरेट कर रहा है तो वो जो ऑपरेटर है यू विल कीप ऑन प्रोड्यूसिंग द इन्वेंट्री एंड दैट विल बी लेटर यूज बाय मशीन टू ऑपरेटर बट यू नो मशीन वन वाला ऑपरेटर फटाफट इन्वेंट्री देते जाएगा पर वो मशीन टू वाला मालूम पड़ा यूज ही नहीं कर रहे तो अनेसरली स्टॉक पाइलअप हो जाता है सो दैट इज वॉट यू डोंट वॉन्ट तो यू विल मेक अ कैन बैन कार्ड तो कैन बैन कार्ड में देर विल बी अ लिमिटेड इन्वेंट्री दैट यूल बी एबल टू फिल इन and once that filled it is filled then that operator one has to stop only then when operator two tell that okay i am taking it from this uh, from uh, the place which is where it is kept udhar se main nikal raha hu fir baad mein operator one will start producing new again till the time it is filled up so say there is a downstream machine jo apna maal idhar dal dega ab ye kidhar kanban card hai to ye kanban card bolega bhai idhar khali teen hi inventory chahiye to jaise hi teen inventory idhar फिलअप हो जाता है ये इधर स्टॉप हो जाएगा इधर स्टॉप हो जाएगा स्टॉप फिर बाद में ये अपस्ट्रीम मशीन उसको लेगा प्रोसेस टू वाला फिर ये इधर खाली हो जाएगा चल ये आ गया अपना काम चालू वापस तीन भर गया स्टॉप ये अपना लेगा ये अपना काम चालू दैट इज व्हाट द वर्ड वर्क ऑफ कैनबैन कार्ड और नोटिफिकेशन कार्ड इज सो नेट कैनबैन कार्ड इज अ नोटिफिकेशन कार्ड विच अलाउज द डाउन मशीन टू वर्क अकॉर्डिंग टू द अपस्ट्रीम मशीन बेस्ड ऑन द कैनबैन कार्ड set in between them yes so how does it help it tells the product uh, fulfill the production requirement and it is called as a pull system pull matlab zabardasti idhar nahi dalte jane ka isko notification milega uske baad hi wo ye bharna chalu karega that is called as pull system and zero wip pile up because idhar hi mera limit kar diya hai maine stock ko so necessarily pile up hoga hi nahi so that is your कैनबैन कार्ड एंड देन इज योर वर्किंग सेल्स वर्किंग सेल्स मतलब से देर इज अ स्मॉल क्लस्टर ऑफ मशीन से चार से पांच छोटा 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 सा मशीन है राधर देन हैविंग यू नो बिग मशीन वॉट यू डू इज यू विल हैव स्मॉल मशीन विच कैन बी ऑपरेटेड बाई वन ऑपरेटर तो वो ऑपरेटर है वो ये मशीन को बराबर से पूरा कोऑर्डिनेट रखेगा बिकॉज उसको ही काम करना है सो ही विल कोऑर्डिनेट अकॉर्डिंगली एंड इंश्योर कि कुछ भी डब्ल्यू आई पी एंड एस एबली प्रोडक्ट नहीं है सो रन बाय सिंगल मशीन ऑपरेटर मशीन ऑपरेटर टेक्स आउटपुट फ्रॉम मशीन टू मशीन तो से यहाँ से यहाँ यहाँ से यहाँ यहाँ से यहाँ यहाँ से यहाँ वो एक ऑपरेटर ही करेगा अननेसेसरीली पाइलअप नहीं होगा नो डब्ल्यू आई पी बिल्डअप एंड डिफेक्टिव आउटपुट कैन बी आइडेंटिफाइड बिकॉज एक ही बंदा कर रहा है ना तो यहाँ पे यहाँ यहाँ से यहाँ यहाँ से यहाँ यहाँ से पूरा एक ही कर रहा है सो डिफेक्टिव आउटपुट कैन बी आइडेंटिफाइड एंड ईजी री कॉन्फिगर एंड रीपोजिशनिंग सो उस हिसाब से मुझे अगर फिर बाद में कुछ कस्टमाइजेशन भी करना है वो एक बंदे को बोलूंगा यू विल ऑटोमेटिकली टेक केयर ऑफ So that is what your working cells are going to do. Just keep on reading the PM answers as well. You will be able to relate very quickly. Then there is something called as black back flush, just in time. Favorite hai student log ka. Back flush basically naam hai ek accounting system ka, which is used for just in time procedures. So 
बैक फ्लश कुछ वो नहीं है रॉकेट साइंस नहीं है इट इज जस्ट अ सिंपल मेथड ऑफ अकाउंटिंग अपना मेथड ऑफ अकाउंटिंग क्या होता है माल आएगा रॉ मटेरियल आया फिर प्रोडक्शन में गया फिर फिनिश गुड्स बना फिर सेल्स हुआ सो हर एक पॉइंट पे आर एम रिसीड मशीनरी एफ जी सेल्स हर एक स्टेप पे अपन लोग उसका प्रोडक्शन प्रॉब्ली करता अकाउंटिंग प्रॉब्ली करते जाते हैं यहाँ पे ऐसा नहीं होता है यहाँ पे क्या होता है देखो कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग सिस्टम विच फोकस ऑन द आउटपुट ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन पहले मैं एक बार ये पढ़ लेता हूँ इन कन्वेंशनल सिस्टम सिक्वेंशियल ट्रैकिंग हैपन वॉट इज सिक्वेंशियल ट्रैकिंग पहले डी एम आएगा फिर डब्ल्यू आई पी फिर एफ जी इस हिसाब से वर्किंग होता है बट बैक फ्लश में क्या होता है उल्टा पहले आउटपुट कितना बना वो देख लो वो आउटपुट के बेसिस पे बैकवर्ड जाके उसका रिकॉर्डिंग करो एंड देन देखो कि भाई कितना क्लोजिंग स्टॉक बचा है उतना क्लोजिंग स्टॉक को कॉस्ट चार्ज करो और बाकी का जो सेल हो गया है उतना कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्स को चार्ज कर दो सो दैट इज वॉट फंडामेंटल बैक फ्लश वर्क ऑन सो उल्टा है वो एज ए सेट फर्स्ट फोकस ऑन आउटपुट then allocate cost between c o g s and closing stock so that's how the system works so now what is this back flush account it is accounting system wherein focus is on the output of an organization and then works back to attribute cost kin do cheezon ke upar attribute hoga stock ke upar and cost of sales ke upar wo attribution hoga so that's how thing work ek chota sa chiller example leta hai to how does it work see total info of fg is entered into computer la sab pehle तो रॉ मटेरियल आता है फिर प्रोसेस होता है फिर एफजी आता है यहाँ पे तो वो स्टार्टिंग किसे करता है सीधा इनको ऑफ फिनिश गुड्स इज एंटर्ड इनटू द कंप्यूटर फिर बाद में बिल ऑफ मटेरियल से वो रिकनसाइल होता है कि भाई अच्छा इतना फिनिश गुड्स है बना है तो इतने फिनिश गुड्स के लिए तो इतना कॉम्पोनेंट इतना रॉ मटीरियल लगना चाहिए था तो कि, कितना रॉ मटीरियल लगा है अकाउंटिंग बॉक्स you know, बैक फ्लश पीछे जा रहा है subtracted from opening inventory example ke liye say finished goods saw unit bana hai to 100 into 2 2 is the raw material required to make one output this is your output to so, total 200 200 ka raw material chahiye opening apne paas se 50 hai apan log ne purchase kiya tha 210 to abhi apne paas closing kitna bach gaya 60 units so ye us hisab se back flush accounting chalta hai wherein finished goods is recorded first and then the working happens Lastly, what are the issues with back flush? Production reporting, if incorrect, was back flush goes for a toss. Toss. Scrap reporting, wrong, was back flush goes for a toss. Inventory accuracy is if it is not equal. Me, I have how much opening, how much closing, it is all equal. Then charging of cost to COGS and closing stock, opening stock will also be incorrect. So you have to take care of these things. If they are taken care of, then it is not a problem. So this sums up your JIT. Just go through, and you will be done. Okay, next we'll give two minutes for this chapter. Material requirement planning. Everything in information system. Ensure that everything is put up properly in the information system. So there are some components, five components to it. MPS, master production schedule. Jitna bhi finished goods chahiye, wo sab master production schedule mein input kar do. Enter. Comes bill of material. फिर मुझे पता चल जाएगा ना कि उसके लिए मुझे कितना sub assemblies and components चाहिए. Enter. इन्वेंट्री फाइल मिल जाएगा कितना मेरे पास ऑलरेडी मटेरियल इन हैंड है उस हिसाब से मुझे ऑर्डर करने को समझेगा रूटिंग फाइल कितना सीक्वेंस ऑफ ऑपरेशंस क्या रखना है मेरे को एंड देन फाइनली मास्टर ऑफ पार्ट्स फाइल जो भी मैंने ऑर्डर किया है उसमें से कितना है कितना यूज हुआ है कितना बचा है ऑल ऑफ दैट विल बी गिवन टू दैट मास्टर पार्ट फाइल सो दिस इज वॉट मटीरियल रिक्वायरमेंट प्लानिंग इज यू वन टू क्वेश्चन रिलेटिंग टू दैट कैन बी इग्नोर बट स्टिल जस्ट यू कैन गिव टू मिनट्स टू दिस मास्टर प्रोडक्शन शेड्यूल फिनिश गुड्स का पहले रिक्वायरमेंट बताएगा फिर बिल ऑफ मटेरियल फाइल में जाएंगे जो सब असेंबलीज एंड कंपोनेंट्स का पूरा डेटा देगा सब डेटा मेंटेनेंस है इन एन इन्फॉर्मेशन सिस्टम प्रॉपरली मेंटेन सो जैसे ही से फॉर एग्जाम्पल मैं मशीन ऑपरेटर हूँ मैंने कोई रॉ मटीरियल को कंज्यूम किया तो उधर मैं एंट्री पास कर दूंगा कि भाई देखो मतलब आई हैव यूज दैट मच मटीरियल सो ऑटोमेटिकली इट विल बी इनपुटेड इन द होल सिस्टम सो दिस पर्सन विल कम टू नो कि ओके अभी इतना मटीरियल इन हैंडी है इतना और मेरे को मंगाने का जरूरत है सो ऑल ऑफ दैट एक सिक्वेंशियल ट्रैकिंग हो जाएगा मास्टर प्रोडक्शन शेड्यूल बिल ऑफ मटीरियल देन इन्वेंट्री फाइल रूटिंग फाइल एंड मास्टर पार्ट फाइल इज वॉट दिस मटीरियल रिक्वायरमेंट प्लानिंग विल हेल्प यू टू डू स्मॉल इन्फॉर्मेशन सिस्टम
Okay then, theory of constraints is now what uh, we'll tackle. This chapter is obviously more important for uh, practical point of view. So if you see my practical uh, video relating to theory of constraints, there are three questions in PM. All three I have solved, and the formula and everything is also given there. So just giving you a two-minute brief on theory of constraints. It was introduced by Goldratt and Cox. This focuses attention on constraints and bottlenecks. You know, in decision making, marginal costing, we have learned a concept of key factor. So, key factor is what it is a limiting resource, correct? So, here in theory of constraints, there are more than one key factor. So, for example, machine hours. Now, the limited machine hours. What used to happen is one machine, uska limited machine hours. So, that becomes my key factor. Suppose now there are three machines. And un tino ka mirko machine hours dekhna hai. So I usually say this that it is like a limiting factor ka limiting factor. That becomes your bottleneck. So usme se jo sabse stringent limiting factor rega that becomes your bottleneck. To calculate that you can also use this TA ratio which is time required upon time uh, available. And as I said you know when you solve the question with me in the practical aspect you will be able to understand it uh, even more better. Now here there is an assumption that uh, what is contribution? Ideally contribution is sales minus variable cost. So variable cost also includes material, variable cost also includes labor. But here it says that it is only sales minus material cost. That is what is contribution. Technically now this the term given is throughput contribution. Why? Because Goldratt and Cox observed that labor is also a fixed uh, kind of cost. It is not a, a variable cost as such in a lot of companies. Because you have to keep labor irrespective. So it is not that you will just employ labor for certain number of days or certain number of months and then remove. So there is an implied thing assumption that the labor is fixed and hence only material cost is variable. So this throughput contribution will only be sales minus variable cost throughput contribution. Other all including labor and everything is your fixed cost. So what is this decision making? Decision making is based on my bottleneck. How do I calculate my bottleneck? The highest TA ratio. How do you calculate your TA ratio? It will be throughput accounting ratio. It is called as time required upon time available. So that's how theory of constraint works. As far as theory is concerned, not important. As far as practical concern, very important. Patch patch marker question are there. You can refer that and you will be done and dusted as far as practical aspect is concerned. Alright then, so we now start with a new chapter, chapter number 8 uh, of your PM, which is called as Uniform Costing and Interfirm Comparison. Uh, unfortunately, some students even don't know that this chapter exists. Yes, it does. This is like, this, this chapter is like uh, any actress or heroine of a Salman Khan movie. Hoke bhi nahi hai. Anyways, sorry for the bad one. I know you are struggling for your exams and my essay gande wale jokes marga. But take care, bear it. Now, Continuing, uniform costing and interform comparison, weightage is 4 marks out of, I would say, every 3 attempt. November 16, mein, 4 marks ke liye question kuch liya to, so you never know. Theek hai na? Ek dam selected 3 to 4 questions hai, uniform costing ke selected 2 to 3 questions hai, interform comparison ke, it is not even going to take us 10 minutes. Any which case, we are just going to ignore this chapter. Let's spare 10 to 15 minutes, understand it, move and done and dust it. Theek hai na? Nothing. As such, I am just going to read what I have written. Pen, paper, PM saath mein rakho, saath saath mein ho jayega tum loka. Main ek idea de deta ho, idea implement karke aana, uh, rakke aana examiner ke saamne and this chapter is done and dust it. Uniform costing is like your account standards. Apna accounts mein accounting standards, FR mein accounting standards kiu hai. So that all firms throughout follow the same accounting procedures, follow the same accounting methods so that when the stakeholders, when the creditors are utilizing that, it becomes comparable with other benchmarks in the similar industry. In the same way, there have been developed something called as cost accounting standards. So, in the line, there is similar to the cost accounting standards so that every company, which is a manufacturing company, hai, service oriented companies, these sub-companies एक यूनिफॉर्मिटी रखे अपने कॉस्टिंग प्रोसीजर्स में अपने कॉस्टिंग अकाउंटिंग में अपने कॉस्टिंग एस्पेक्ट्स में मैनेजमेंट रिलेटेड इश्यूज में सो दैट यू नो देयर इज कंपेरेबिलिटी एंड देयर इज अ बेंचमार्क परफॉर्मेंस फॉर ईच कंपनी सो दैट इज वेयर यूनिफॉर्म कॉस्टिंग टेक्स इट्स फ्लो फ्रॉम इधर मैंने एक शॉर्ट फॉर्म लिखा है कर भला तो हो बोला वो कैसे यूज होगा वो आगे मैं तुम लोगों को बताऊंगा सो यूनिफॉर्म कॉस्टिंग इज लाइक अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड 
जैसे कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड है कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड है यूनिफॉर्म कॉस्टिंग इट्स बेस फ्रॉम वेर इन डिफरेंट कंसर्न इन एन इंडस्ट्री शुड अडॉप्ट कॉमन मेथड ऑफ कॉस्टिंग एज ए सेट सो अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड वही तो है कि भाई कॉमन मेथड ऑफ अकाउंटिंग यूज करो कॉस्ट अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड कॉमन मेथड ऑफ कॉस्टिंग यूज करो दैट इज वॉट यूनिफॉर्म कॉस्टिंग प्राइमरीली ब्रॉडली इज वेर इन डिफरेंट कंसर्न इन एन इंडस्ट्री शुड अडॉप्ट कॉमन मेथड ऑफ कॉस्टिंग हाउ डज इट हेल्प ओवरऑल बेसिस पे इट रिजल्ट इन कॉस्ट कंट्रोल एंड कॉस्ट डिडक्शन बिकॉज क्या होगा से फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर आर से टेन फॉर्म्स ऑपरेटिंग मैन्युफैक्चरिंग ऑफ पेन तो वो सब फॉर्म्स अपना अपना इनपुट्स देंगी अपना अपना आउटपुट्स बताएंगी एंड दैट कैन बी यूज बाय वेरियस फॉर्म तो एक सिनर्जी इफेक्ट मिल जाएगा इवन तो दे आर कॉम्पिटिटर्स यस दे आर कॉम्पिटिटर्स बट स्टिल यू नो वन बेस्ट प्रैक्टिस फ्रॉम वन फॉर्म मे बी यूज बाय दी अदर एंड वाइस एवर सा एंड देर कैन बी परफेक्ट मार्केट डिफिकल्ट बट दैट्स वॉट यूनिफॉर्म कॉस्टिंग से सो हेल्पफुल इन म्यूचुअल कॉस्ट कंट्रोल एंड कॉस्ट रिडक्शन use these words for your theory practically useless thing objectives now what are the objectives facilitates comparison bar bar tum logo yahi samjha raha hu main ki ye kiske liye hai uniform costing taki comparison kar sakte hai unhealthy competition nikal jayega unhealthy competition yani kai bar abhi kya hota hai competition ki wajah se you know the, the competition ki wajah se a lot of companies underprice their product even below their cost just in order that you know their able to sell it or for that matter your competitor is not able to sell it. you know especially ye e-commerce mein jab se aaya hai so that's where if there is uniform costing so jovial relations hai proper cordial relations hai so eliminates unhealthy competition next is improves efficiency as i said one best practices can be used by the other ensure standardization one of the most important aspects why probably you want to use यूनिफॉर्म कॉस्टिंग तो भाई स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन हो जाए सबके प्रोसेस में सबके मेथड ऑफ कॉस्टिंग में ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड लास्ट इज प्रोवाइड रेलिवेंट डेटा सब कंपनीज का मेरे को रेलिवेंट डेटा मिल जाएगा इंक्लूडिंग माइंड सो वेर वेल आई विल शेयर माई डेटा आई कैन गेट सम बेटर व्यूज एंड दैट कैन हेल्प मी इन एंश्योरिंग दैट आई डू बिजनेस प्रॉपरली सो वॉट इज दब्जेक्टिव ऑब्जेक्टिव इज फेसिलिटेड कंपेरिजन टाइम एर अगेन आई एम सींग दैट एलिमिनेट अनहेल्थी कॉम्पिटिशन इम्प्रूव वॉट efficiency ensure standardization and provides relevant data what are the requisites requisites matlab uniform costing chalo chalu karte uniform costing chalu karte to kaise chalu kare kya kya chahiye uniform costing chalu karne ke liye is the question that you will ask right so the question that you are going to ask is kya kya chahiye uniform costing chalu karne ke liye the question that you are going to ask is kya kya chahiye uniform costing chalu karne ke liye and the answer that you are going to get is this willingness of firms so firms agree hone chahiye that yes we are ready to support for uh, you know kind of helping each other in ensuring that a costing methodology set ho jata hai so willingness of firm and there are industries mind you there are industries which are so closely knit that uh, even though they are competitors they will do healthy competition at the same time share uh, the things that are going in their firm so it happens aisa nahi hai ki नहीं होता है सो विलिंगनेस ऑफ फर्म्स देन देर इज स्पिरिट ऑफ कोऑपरेशन एंड म्यूचुअल ट्रस्ट दैट हैज टू बी देयर जब तक वो नहीं होगा जब तक ट्रस्ट नहीं होगा मेरे को एक दूसरे कंपनी में आई एम अ कॉम्पिटिटर सो आई विल बी द फर्स्ट पर्सन टू डिस्ट्रस्ट इट वहां पे दैट इज वेर इट हैज टू स्टार्ट स्पिरिट ऑफ कोऑपरेशन एंड ट्रस्ट देर हैज टू बी अ म्यूचुअल एक्सचेंज ऑफ आइडियाज ऐसा ही नहीं वन वे खाली एक ही बंदा आके अपना 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 पूरा सब बिजनेस के बारे में सब बताता जा रहा है नॉट शेयरिंग दे आर व्यूज दैट इज अगेन नॉट गोइंग टू हैपन विल नॉट मेक यूनिफॉर्म कॉस्टिंग अ सक्सेस सो देर हैज टू बी अ म्यूचुअल एक्सचेंज ऑफ आइडियाज बिग फर्म शुड टेक लीड बिकॉज दे वुड हैव एक्सपीरियंस बेटर कॉस्टिंग थिंग्स उन्होंने टफ सिचुएशन भी देखा रहेगा उन्होंने उसको इम्प्रूव भी किया रहेगा तो समबड़ी हु इज न्यू हु इज एंटरिंग इट दे कैन बी गाइडेड बाई दिस बिगर फॉर्म दैट दीज आर द मिस्टेक्स दैट कैन हैपन सो यू डू नॉट डू दैट एंड लास्टली यूनिफॉर्मिटी आ जाएगा होना चाहिए प्रोडक्शन मेथड्स में अकाउंटिंग मेथड्स प्रिंसिपल्स एंड प्रोसीजर्स सो ऑल ऑफ दिस आर रेक्विजिट्स ऑफ यूनिफॉर्म कॉस्टिंग वंस टेकन केयर ऑफ यू नो यूनिफॉर्म कॉस्टिंग कैन वर्क वंडर्स एंड फॉर दैट नोट नाउ वी विल सी what are the advantages of using uniform costing as i said uniform costing a short form kar bhala to ho bhala now continuing advantages what are the advantages abhi samjho mere ko koi naya company chalu karne ka hai aur wo manufacturing industry already established hai pen manufacturing industry already established hai so what i will do is ke mere ko abhi wo uske costing methodologies ke upar research nahi karna padega 
डन ना ऑलरेडी पब्लिक कर चुका है तो लेट्स शेयर दैट सो मैनेजमेंट इज सेव फ्रॉम डेवलपिंग अ सिस्टम ऑफ ओन नेक्स्ट डिक्रीज इन लेबर टर्न ओवर सो सर लेबर टर्न ओवर कैसे कम होगा होगा नाउ लेबर टर्न ओवर मतलब क्या लेबर इज स्विचिंग ऑफ फ्रॉम वन कंपनी टू अदर स्विचिंग ऑफ फ्रॉम वन कंपनी टू अनदर सो दैट विल रिड्यूज यूजली वाई डज दैट हैपन दैट हैपन बिकॉज ऑफ मेजर रीजन इज सैलरी कि भाई मेरे को किसी ने और ने ज्यादा सैलरी दिया मेरे को किसी और ने और कुछ एक्स्ट्रा पर्क दे दिया सो लेट्स एव स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन देर एज वेल लेट्स कीप अ प्रॉपर मिनिमम वेज रिक्वायरमेंट विच इज फॉलोड बाय ऑल द firms using uh, uniform costing let's have the increment on a similar basis so that wo you know the company is not affected because of labor turnover so uniform wage system is what you can keep which can help in decrease of labor turnover uh, developed by mutual consultation so mutual consultation rahega it is only going to lead to a healthy competition similar prices no under costing oil companies you know oil companies have this system where in they will not undercut their uh, competitor that is the reason throughout the world the uh, oil industry which is there is very united and they ensure that uniform costing is followed by them baki there are hardly few industries facilitates comparison of cost and figures pata to chale main kitna pani mein hu samne wala kitna pani mein what is he doing better what am i doing better so we both can improve right otherwise main इम्प्रूव करते जाओ मुझे पता भी नहीं चल रहा है कि समबडी एल्स इज इम्प्रूविंग एट अ मच फास्टर पेस वो एक आइडिया आ जाएगा फेसिलिटेट कंपेरिजन ऑफ कॉस्ट एंड फिगर्स जॉइंट सर्विसेज ऑफ कॉस्ट कंसल्टेंट्स मारवाड़ी सो पैसा बच जाएगा ना कॉस्ट कंसल्टेंट बोले हम लोग दोनों का तो सेम ही है सेम ही कम करने का थोड़ा कम नहीं कर दे नेक्स्ट कंपेरेटिव असेसमेंट बिटवीन firms so suppose agar koi do firm rahega they can comparatively assess and r and d of bigger firms usable by smaller firms so research and development agar kisi bhi bade firm ne kiya rahega wo smaller firm use kar sakta hai waise idhar tha management say from developing a phone again there is a bigger firm which has already done it and in that case it can be used by others as well so that is an advantage of uniform costing so as i said three major aspects to be understood here that uh, what are the you know features and objectives of uniform costing features different concerns should adopt a common method of costing objective comparison healthy comp unhealthy competition eliminate efficiency improve ho jayega second question requisites kya cheeze chahiye kiske liye uniform costing ko implement karne ke liye and finally what are the advantages what are the advantages that you have by following uniform costing as i said labor turnover kam hota hai management is safe from developing a system of own r&d khud ko nahi karna padega somebody else has already taken care of similar prices so under costing nahi hota hai koi at least cost ki wajah se koi mere ko chhod kar nahi jayega comparative assessment of firms joint services of cost consultant so that is where your uniform costing is नेक्स्ट इज इंटर फॉर्म कंपेरिजन नाम देखो नाम देखो नाम इंटर फॉर्म कंपेरिजन सो देर आर फॉर्म्स अपने को कंपेरिजन करने का सो दो फॉर्म है उससे ज्यादा फॉर्म्स है कंपेरिजन करने का एवरीबडी डज दैट आई एम इन टू एजुकेशन इंडस्ट्रीज में से फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम इन टू कोचिंग एजुकेशन में हूँ देर आर अदर प्लेयर हु आर इन टू कोचिंग हु आर इन टू एजुकेशन इंडस्ट्री ऑफ सिमिलर फील्ड बराबर ना तो आई एम इन टू सी ए कोचिंग एंड समबडी एल्स इज इन टू सी एफ ए कोचिंग तो उसका तो कंपेरिजन ही नहीं हो सकता ना हम लोग दोनों का करेक्ट सो आई एम इन टू सी ए कोचिंग आई विल कम्पेयर माई सेल्फ विद समी इन टू सी ए कोचिंग एज वेल नाउ देर आई विल कम टू नो के ओके फॉर मी दिस इज द टोटल नंबर ऑफ आर्स दैट आई टेक टू कम्प्लीट सी ए फाइनल वॉट इज द टोटल मार्केट प्राइस दैट आई एम टेकिंग फ्रॉम माई स्टूडेंट वॉट इज द नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स दैट आई एम टीचिंग वॉट इज द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ माई स्टूडेंट वॉट इज माई ओन परफॉर्मेंस वॉट हाउ आई माई नोट हाउ आर दिस स्ट्रक्चर इन टर्म्स ऑफ मार्केट all of that comparison is there say for example there can be a interform comparison between computer industry so laptop basically uh, mobile phone so laptop means there is a dell and there is a acer so dell acer selling same products so they will compare themselves they will compare what is the cost what is the profitability percentage overall of dell as a company of acer as a company they will come to know there so that's how interform comparison works for example ac company so there is o general and there is daikin and there is a blue star so a blue star may want to uh, assess its own comparison with the uh, you know benchmark in the market so that's how interform comparison works 
I will want to compare myself with those in the similar industry in terms of the costs that I incur, in terms of the price that uh, they are quoting, in terms of the efficiency and performance that I am generating on an overall basis, the catchwords, the costs, the profits, the performance, the efficiency that I am generating. Okay? You know, it comes with the flow. So, if I am comparing two mobile phones, Apple ka or Samsung, I will cost the cost, profit, the performance and then the efficiency. That is where my comparison works. So, technique of evaluating, evaluation in terms of inter-form comparison, performance, efficiency, cost, profit. How does that happen? That is only going to happen through voluntary exchange of information. So, I will have to approach my competitor industry and tell them that let's have a inter-firm comparison. I will give you my, uh, you know, quotes, things and stuff which you want and probably vice versa. And only then it is possible that once that voluntary exchange of information is done between uh, various companies, the costs, the prices, the profits, the productivity, then can be compared and it should be done among firms engaged in similar type of operations. As I said, a CA cannot compare with a CFA and so on and so forth. So, a Dell company will not compare its laptop unit with a Samsung's mobile unit. Doesn't make sense, right? So, Apple to Apple comparison should be among firms engaged in similar type of operations. What will be the benefit of it? What is the advantage of it? The overall view of industry will be able to tell that, okay, in the market, industry, my industry is running net profit percentage, operating profit is running 25%. His expense ratio is running 30%. So, I will come to know where am I standing. Help SWOT analysis in comparison to others. SWOT strength, weakness, opportunities and threats. So, what is my strength? What is my weakness? What is my opportunity? What is my threat? What is my firm? Inter-firm? All of that can be analyzed by inter-firm comparison. Correct? So, I will come to know that, okay, my product has a 6 GB RAM, whereas somebody else has a 4 GB RAM. So, inter-firm comparison gives me that I have a strength in terms of the processing speed. So, that way, weakness find karunga, opportunities, threats, all of that will be compared. Develops cost consciousness. Pata chalega mujhe kitna mera cost hai, samne wale ka kitna cost hai. Else, government in price regulation. Now, there are industries which are regulated in terms of pricing by the government, right? So, there, you know, if, if there is an inter-firm comparison, they know that, okay, all firms, probably use a similar method of uh, costing, then it helps in price regulation. Provides unbiased reporting, I will come to know where do I stand, the others will come to know where do they stand and helps in reduction of cost by inter-firm comparison. What are again the requisites here? Let's see. So, what are the requisites here by inter-firm comparison? Karne ke hai? To say for example, koi industry hai, usme patch companies hai. Okay. So, industry hai se pen. Pen industry mein A, B, C, D, E. There are five companies. Pacho Pach company should agree that yes, we are ready for inter-firm comparison and we will share the data accordingly. Ab wo data kisko share karega? A, B ko, C, D ko, that, that will result into a chaos. So, we will have to establish a central body. So, establish a central body which will work as a center from inter-firm comparison. So, I, A, B, C, D, E will give all the data to these, uh, this central body which has been established for inter-firm comparison, so center for inter-firm comparison set karega mein, which will collect the data, dissemination of result or data collect karne ke baad usko analyze karega, analyze karne ke baad, jo bhi data hai, wo members ko dena padega and then they will organize training program. So, tabhi, wo inter-firm comparison will make sense. Nature of information that may be required, it can be related to raw material consumption, labor efficiency, methods of production, return on capital employed, just to give you a few idea. It will differ, differ from industry to industry and company to company. But just giving you an idea, so we may want uh, to compare ourselves on these bases, uh, raw material, labor, methods of production, you know, what is the return on capital employed, what, how much is the money that is being stuck up, so on and so forth. So that can be there. Then there needs to be a questionnaire as to understand what things are going on in the industry and there will be a report generation which will help us in ensuring that the inter-firm comparison is done in a proper and smooth manner. So, this is what inter-firm comparison is, comparing the various activities and overall uh, profit, cost, efficiency and performance of various firms in order to yield the best results possible 
both ways and there should be a win-win situation. So, uniform costing and interform comparison both are working on the concept of win-win situation for the competitors and in turn for the consumer. Okay, next in line, profitability analysis chapter number 9 from your uh, PM. This chapter is basically divided into three parts. One is called as DPP, direct product profitability. Other is called as CPA, customer profitability analysis. And the third is called as balance scorecard. So that is how it is divided. Uh, vintage wise, four marks ka average vintage pakad lo. So on an average, tum log dekho ke to last 10 mein se 8 bar iske upar ek 4 se 6 mark ka question aaya hai and uh, out of 10, 8 times, so it, it makes a probability of 80% chances that it will be asked. Question number 1A, May, November 16 is what they asked the question, on a, a practical question on balance scorecard. So it can be any question, it can be a theory question related to DPP, it can be a practical question related to DPP, direct product profitability that we are going to study now. It can be a direct question on customer profit, theory question on customer profitability analysis CPA or it can be a practical question on uh, customer profitability analysis and last is balance scorecard. So it can be a theory question on balance scorecard or it can be a practical question on balance scorecard. So that's how it works. Uh, either ways things uh, can be asked. So you know six parts in a way three parts broadly DPP direct product profitability CPA customer profitability analysis and last is balance scorecard. In DPP theory practical in CPA theory practical balance scorecard. Yes. Okay. So now quickly then moving to DPP direct product profitability. What is direct pro product profitability conceptually it means that to find out the profitability of every product. Say for example I am into something which I am into a multi product manufacturing and selling. I am into multi product dealing, multi product trading. So I have to know how much product is going to be in which product. What do I mean? Say for example I have 5 products. Overall profitability is very good. But I have to say that in two products, in loss, in three products, there is a benefit. Overall profitability is very good. So, in the case of individual products, the loss is dug and the loss is covered by the profit earning prospects of by the profit earning prospects of the profitable product. So that is why direct product profitability becomes very important in today's scenario. We have learned something called as activity based costing, similar lines ke upari hai. So they basically want to break the traditional barrier that it has to be absorbed on the basis of machine hours, it has to be absorbed on the basis of labor hours, no. The traditional barriers are broken and now it can be basis anything and most precisely they are looking at uh, allocating or apportioning uh, costs directly to the product for which it is responsible. So that is what direct product profitability uh, speaks about. Alright, so there is any cost which is if relatable to a particular product ensure that you hit uh, that cost to that product. Obviously if, if it is that direct then things are very easy. Indirect cost but the apportioning measure is there and a proper basis is there then in that case you have to go ahead with that basis as well. So that individual products profitability is aware, the uh, owner is aware of and accordingly things can be worked out. You know, just like your PPI and accounts, mein, IPCC accounts, mein PPI, profit prior to incorporation, karke, koi to chindi chapter hai. So like you log bifurcate karte ho ratio, ratio of sales, time, so on and so forth. Like you said, there is a product, hai, you know, there are five, six products five six products say for example there are the, I have a, a place a retail store wherein I keep certain products Ab kaun sa product kitna jaga occupy kar raha hai? accordingly wo product ke liye utna cost apportion ho jayega and that will be in the ratio of the space used in respect to vis-a-vis -vis the whole range that I am going to pay so that I come to know that okay ye product ka direct profitability kitna hai because if that product is removed off it gives me empty space I can use it for something else as well so you know I ensuring that direct product profitability uh, you will come to know individual products profit and that in turn can help you to ensure that you can eliminate the unprofitable ones and 
filling more of the profitable ones and your product mix can be improved and your overall profitability can be enhanced on that note direct product profitability so a company has a portfolio kai ka portfolio portfolio of profitable products jaise ek investor ka hota na portfolio equities debt uh, preference shares gold real estate uska portfolio hai to waise hi ek कंपनी एक बिजनेसमैन है उसका पोर्टफोलियो है बट काय का पोर्टफोलियो है प्रॉफिटेबल प्रोडक्ट्स का तो वो प्रॉफिटेबल प्रोडक्ट्स कैसे ओवरऑल प्रॉफिट है मेरे को सो क्या हो रहा है सी देयर आर फाइव प्रोडक्ट्स ए बी सी डी ई आई एम लुकिंग एट द ओवरऑल प्रॉफिट मैंने इंडिविजुअल बेसिस पे प्रोडक्ट को कॉस्ट एलोकेट ही नहीं किया है एलोकेशन ही नहीं किया है तो इसके लिए मुझे लग रहा है कि ओवरऑल प्रॉफिट है ना तो चलो सब प्रोडक्ट्स प्रॉफिट ही कर रहे होगे नहीं 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 ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है Are you understanding? So overall profitability dikh raha hai that does not necessarily mean that we co profit hi hai. Yahan pe individual and relative profitability of products is also to be seen. So if individual and relative profitability of products is to be seen, then we use the methodology of DPP, direct product profitability. Now what is DPP? It is a measure. profitability of measured it is used to measure profitability of individual product so jo bhi individual products hai uska profitability agar mere ko measure karne ka hai then in that case i will use dpp theek okay? hai so individual product ka profitability measure karne ka hai that is what dpp is profitability product wise decision making matlab agar mere ko product wise profitability pata chal gaya so decision making becomes so simple so what is dpp again na in, in terms of the way you are going to present it in the examinations it is a company has a portfolio of profitable products giving overall profitability in order to calculate the individual and relative profitability of individual products we use direct product profitability which helps to measure profitability of individual products and helps in decision making as i said it is similar to abc and doesn't follow absorption कॉस्टिंग यूज इन रिटेल सेक्टर जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल डी मार्ट वॉन्स टू नो कि इसको इंडिविजुअल प्रोडक्ट्स के ऊपर कितना प्रॉफिट आया है देन इट कैन यूज द डायरेक्ट प्रोडक्ट प्रॉफिट एबिलिटी इन्वॉल्व एट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ एक तो परचेज प्राइस वो तो डायरेक्ट कॉस्ट है वो तो मैं एड करने वाला हूँ प्लस जो मेरा इनडायरेक्ट कॉस्ट है ना वो भी मैं प्रोडक्ट वाइज यहाँ पे डालना चालू कर दूंगा इंस्टेड ऑफ ऑन अ ओवरऑल बेसिस सो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वेयर हाउस रिटेल से रिलेटेड कॉस्ट रहेगा तो वो वेयर हाउसिंग स्पेस के बेसिस पे जाएगा एज एग्जाम्पल transport time product ke hisab se all of that can be used as a measure so yahan pe jo bhi indirect cost hai wo indirect cost ko meko divide karna padega overhead volume related production batch inventory or financing all of these ways i will have to bifurcate that so this over overhead cost se usko karne ke liye mereko abc cost method use kar sakta hu main volume related kuch rahega to usko quantity wise kar sakte hai batch wise kar sakte hai if if i if need be inventory or financing cost rahega then in that case usko capital cost ke form mein main use kar sakta hu to mere ko ek discounting factor jo rahega us basis pe i will find out that you know what is the amount of uh, investment or capital that is stuck in a particular product so that amount that is stuck uska jo financing cost aa raha hai which is my capital cost here Who I can find out. So that means you know the whole direct product profitability will help you to find out the profit of each product. Now what are the benefits? Better cost analysis, better pricing decision, cost analysis. Are exam ek ek product ka total cost mil gaya, total selling price mil gaya, total profit mil gaya. Sidha mujhe next time analysis ke liye it is so useful. So better cost analysis, better pricing decision. Accordingly I can take the price. बेटर मैनेजमेंट ऑफ स्टोर एंड वेयर हाउस स्पेस एज ए सेट अगर मेरे को कोई प्रोडक्ट से फायदा नहीं हो रहा है बट वो वेयर हाउस स्पेस अच्छा खासा खा रहा है प्रॉब्लम आई विल एलिमिनेट दैट प्रोडक्ट एंड रेस्टोलाइजेशन ऑफ प्रोडक्ट सो सेल्स मिक्स अकॉर्डिंगली कैन बी इम्प्रूव सो यहाँ पे यू कैन जस्ट राइट डाउन दैट सेल्स मिक्स इम्प्रूवमेंट कैन ऑल्सो बी डन बिकॉज ऑफ दैट नाउ दिस द जनरल फॉर्मेट सेल्स माइनस सी ओ जी एस ग्रॉस मार्जिन माइनस डिरेक्ट प्रोडक्ट कॉस्ट which can be warehouse transportation storage based and that will give you a direct product profit direct product profit so this is about direct product uh, profitability simultaneously now in this case what i am doing is simultaneously i am picking up sums from pm as far as dpp is concerned so direct product profitability ka ek sum hai 
दैट आई विल जस्ट लेट यू नो हाउ टू सॉल्व सो दैट वो भी तुम लोग को फिर करने की अलग से जरूरत नहीं है सो देर इज क्वेश्चन नंबर वन ऑन पेज नाइन पॉइंट नाइन एंड देन देर इज क्वेश्चन नंबर टू पेज नाइन पॉइंट वन वन एंड देन देर इज क्वेश्चन नंबर यस क्वेश्चन नंबर वन एंड टू दीज आर टू क्वेश्चन विच आर एक्सक्लूसिवली बेस्ड on your direct product profitability how does it work so there are four dolls here a b c d e there is estimated selling price there is cost associated to it so every individual product is priced i will come to know what is the total contribution given by each and every product and accordingly i can take a decision that which product is giving me a highest profit and which product giving me a negligible profit and accordingly using dpp i can Take decisions as to optimal sales make. This is same way again here. There is next Jigyasa India Limited, which also has uh, various products. So again, butter jelly, fruit and nut, icy cool. You know that. So there are various costs which are being incurred for these three products: butter jelly, fruit and nuts, icy cool. So some will be bifurcated on the basis of ratio of rent. Rent will be there. So after that, there will be sales and commission expenses. There will be marketing expenses. There will be on that basis. purely just read the question and it is more of mathematics than anything else in solving a direct product profitability question you know it will be a very straightforward question all that you have to do is just identify it and uh, whatever the question says this is what you have to follow as far as dpp is concerned so that's how it works only two questions in pm also not much of a weightage so can be asked in theory benefits of dpp better cost analysis better pricing decision management of stores and warehouse space actualization of product basically telling you that proper sales mix uh, which what is the proper sales mix but wo likhne ke pehle ek dpp ka idea likhne ka so you have to write down certain points pura ek mahol banana padega dpp ka fir baad mein jo ekdam specific answer hai wo likhne ka that's where the examiner will come to know how good you are in terms of your theory right so okay. next line customer profitability analysis uh जो कस्टमर मुझे ज्यादा प्रॉफिट देगा मैं वही कस्टमर को रखेगा सपोज मेरे पास पांच कस्टमर है प्रोडक्ट की बात नहीं कर रहा कस्टमर की सपोज मेरे पास पांच कस्टमर है तो वो कस्टमर जिससे मुझे सबसे ज्यादा प्रॉफिट होता है आई विल कंटिन्यू विद दैट कस्टमर बाकी जिससे मुझे लॉस होता है बैड डेप्ट होता है ज्यादा डिस्काउंट देना पड़ता है आई विल डिस्क कंटिन्यू विद दैट कस्टमर सो दैट इज कस्टमर प्रोफिटेबिलिटी एनालिसिस टू आइडेंटिफाई हु आर योर कस्टमर एंड देन टू आइडेंटिफाई हु आर योर प्रॉफिट मेकिंग yes everybody so on that note customer profitability analysis so relatively this is as i said relatively a new technique customers use some activities but not all different group of customers have different activity profiles you know uh, for example if you go to a bank to bank mein koi atm use karta hai koi credit card koi debit card koi overdraft ka facility leta hai so different different customers use different different uh, services which are there correct so i will have to ensure that every customer is charged for accordingly for the services that he is taking same way in a hotel say there is a garden there is a swimming pool there is a bar not everybody may use a swimming pool again not everybody may use a bar at the same time not everybody may use a garden so jo customer jitna utilization kar raha hai us hisab se us samay funds bhi recover karu and at the same time utna hi mera cost udhar work out hote jaye so that is where customer profitability analysis uh, comes in at absolutely uses chances of this being asked in the examinations almost nil benefits helps to have a constructive dialogue between buyer and seller customers eroding profit and customers contributing it i think it is more of customers contributing it jo customer mujhe zyada contribute karega i'll go ahead with that value and profit of each segment mujhe pata chalte jayega segment in you know with the reference deference to the customer and lastly it is effective cost reporting why because meko customer basis pe ek ek cost pata chal gaya hai you know, if you open your pm page 9.15 question number 3 question number 4 are all questions on customer profitability analysis so here if you read question number 3 there is a customer a and there is a customer b we are giving different discounts to them we are receiving different sales value from them so accordingly we will total uh, on a overall basis we will see which customer yields us uh, more profit and that is how we can work out 
from others to gain a more profit and at the same time uh, you know give a good service to the current customers which are already giving us a high profit this is more of like your Pareto analysis 80 20 rule so 20 percent customers 80 percent the value of business they say so 20 percent people are the focus karneka and other or quality improve karneka so that they don't go away because if they go away they are taking away my 80 percent business which should never happen so that is how things work profitability analysis CPA. So the third aspect is, as I said, balance scorecard. This is, you know, a recent introduction. You can say a lot of annual reports nowadays. From probably now on, you will see having a balance scorecard. So just observe. Abhi nahi thoda. India is yet to adopt it uh, in, in in a proper manner. But I think in coming years, definitely every annual report will have a balance scorecard. So the reason is that ki har ek annual report mein rahega. Yes, it is a very interesting concept introduced by Kaplan and Norton, Harvard University ke bande hai, dono unne ne iska vishleshan kiya, this, they are the people who introduced this concept to the whole world and United States, UK have already adopted in a very good manner. Tata Motors is one of the Indian companies which has also adopted Tata uh, balance scorecard in, in a very uh, good form. So that's how it looks, uh, the balance scorecard. मतलब क्या है इसका सर स्कोर कार्ड का मतलब क्या होता है स्कोर कार्ड का मतलब तो होता है रिजल्ट तुम लोग को जो अभी सीए फाइनल का एग्जाम देने वाले हो ना तो 18th 19th जुलाई को आएगा तुम्हारा भी स्कोर कार्ड व्हाट इज दैट दैट इज योर रिजल्ट दैट रिजल्ट विल गिव यू द मार्क्स व्हाट इज दैट मार्क्स शो योर परफॉर्मेंस कि भाई कितना पढ़ाई किया था तुमने और उस बेसिस पे कितना मार्क्स मिला है एंड उस बेसिस पे यू विल बी डिक्लेयर्ड अ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट जस्ट इमेजिन कितना बड़ा चीज है जो तुम लोग अभी जो तुमको मिलने वाला है ये ये स्कोर कार्ड डिसाइड करेगा कि तुम चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट हो या नहीं so, क्या बोलो सो बैलेंस स्कोर कार्ड सो स्कोर कार्ड एज एस एड इज इज काइंड ऑफ अ रिजल्ट विच द कंपनी इज गिविंग ऑन द होल परफॉर्मेंस एज टू हाउ द होल मैनेजमेंट टीम हैज परफॉर्म the lower level management team, the top level management from pin to end, everybody, how they have performed is what this scorecard will give you. And the name is balance scorecard. So that has to be balanced. I'll just give you an example. Say for example, abhi tum log group 2 de rahe ho. Char paper hai, costing over, iska, DT, IDT. Whatever hai, aggregate mein passing kitna hai? 400. So total 400 marks ka hai. 100, 100, 100, 100. तुम लोगों को पास होने के लिए एग्रीगेट कितना चाहिए भाई इधर 200 या उससे ज्यादा तो दिखना ही चाहिए वरना तो पास नहीं होगे ठीक है सर 200 लेकर आ गए 100 और 100 आ गया इधर 0 और 0 आया चलेगा नहीं चलेगा क्या तुम्हारे नाम के आगे चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट लगेगा नहीं लगेगा डेफिनेटली नहीं लगेगा हां ये दोनों में एग्जेम्पशन मिल जाएगा बट एंड ऑफ द डे एग्जेम्पशन नहीं मेरे को सीए का डिग्री चाहिए आई वांट टू बिकम अ Chartered accountant. Will this allow me? Absolutely not. This is what balance scorecard is trying to tell you. See, institute has already adopted it 50-60 years back. Scorecard is, but is it balanced? Hai? How is it going to be balanced? This is going to be balanced if it is 50-50-50-50. At least. सब में मिनिमम 40 तो लाने ही है. Average, total, चारों का मिला के 50 तो होना ही है. So your scorecard has to be Balanced. ऐसा नहीं है कि सब्जेक्ट में स्क्यूड रहा 100, बाकी में नहीं किया तो भी चल बे, ना चल बे. You have to secure minimum of 40, an aggregate of 50. That will make your scorecard balance. समझ में आया? क्या होता है balance scorecard? वैसे ही अब इसको business perspective से सोचो. अब इसको business perspective से अभी तुम लोग सोचोगे. So Kaplan and Norton told that from a business perspective, there are four main perspectives on which a company has to excel, and it can become the greatest ever company. Apple, Microsoft, India ka company le lo, Tata's, Infosys, they all excel in those four perspectives, and hence the whole world knows them, and hence the valuation is running into billions. What are those four perspectives? Those four perspectives are financial perspective, customer perspective, innovation and learning perspective, internal business perspective. 
क्या है वो एक एक पर्सपेक्टिव को डिटेल में समझेंगे बट लेट्स हैव एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द थ्योरी दैट यू विल हैव टू राइट बिफोर यू स्टार्ट राइटिंग दैट सो अप्रोच टू प्रोविजन ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टू मैनेजमेंट टू असिस्ट इन स्ट्रेटेजिक पॉलिसी फॉर्मुलेशन एंड अचीवमेंट थोड़ा बड़ा बड़ा वर्डिंग है लिखना पड़ता है एग्जाम में मैंने भी इसके लिए लिखा है बाकी मतलब वही है दैट तुम लोग का जो पॉलिसी फॉर्मुलेशन होगा ना वो पॉलिसी फॉर्मुलेशन शुड बी इन सच अ मैनर दैट दोज फोर परस्पेक्टिव आर केप्ट इन माइंड सो स्ट्रेटेजिक पॉलिसी फॉर्मुलेशन एंड सो पॉलिसी का फॉर्मुलेशन एंड खाली फॉर्मुलेट करके कुछ नहीं होगा एग्जीक्यूट भी करना पड़ेगा अचीव भी करना पड़ेगा ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल स्ट्रेटेजी इन परफॉर्मेंस मैनेजमेंट इंप्लीमेंटिंग एज ए सेड एग्जीक्यूशन भी करना पड़ेगा इंप्लीमेंट भी करना पड़ेगा एंड हाउ आर यू गोइंग टू डू इट यू आर गोइंग टू डू इट बाय मैनेजिंग फोर परस्पेक्टिव विच आर देर उसमें भी द थॉट प्रोसेस इज यू नो टॉप पे देखो क्या दिख रहा है फाइनेंशियल परस्पेक्टिव एंड ऑफ द डे क्या चाहिए वेन इज माई शेयर होल्डर गोइंग टू बी आई पी वेन ही गेट्स डिविडेंड वेन ही गेट्स मनी वेन ही गेट वैल्यूएशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन तभी वो खुश होगा सो इन शॉर्ट वो कब होगा जब कंपनी को प्रॉफिट मिलेगा प्रॉफिट कब मिलेगा जब कंपनी ज्यादा सेल्स करेगा सो द होल इंटेंट वॉट कैपिटल एंड नॉटन सेट दैट ये फाइनेंशियल परस्पेक्टिव है ना वो टॉप पे है पर वो टॉप पे लाने के लिए ना ये सपोर्टिंग एक्टर लोग का जरूरत है कोई भी मूवी देखना मेन काम सपोर्टिंग एक्टर का होता है भले ही अवार्ड किसको मिलता है एक्टर को मिलता है बट अगर थ्री इडियट्स मूवी में आमिर खान को टॉप मिला है या दंगल में आमिर खान इज रीच देर इट इज बिकॉज ही हैड द प्रॉपर सपोर्टिंग एक्टर्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ माधवन और शर्मन जोशी और फॉर दैट मैटर इन दंगल इफ ही इज एट द टॉप इट इज बिकॉज ही हैड दो सुपर एक्ट्रेसेज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ so that's how the business is right yes i want finance i want money i want my shareholder to be happy i want to give him dividend i want to increase his market share i want to increase his market cap but that is only possible when so mereko chahiye kya mereko chahiye ki main financial perspective mein top pe aa jaau to succeed financially how should a company appear to stakeholders wo tab bhi hone wala hai jab mera sales profitability cash flows cost reduction wo sab you know the, the whole uh, the, the whole scenario is just so happening tab bhi acha hoga that is my financial perspective that is my financial perspective but wo earn karne ke liye kuch karna padega sir kya karna padega pehle customer perspective pe focus karna padega fir innovation and learning lana padega fir internal business ko sudharna padega tab jaake main udhar pahunch paunga तो ये फिलहाल कुछ नहीं फिलहाल उसको छोड़ दो हाँ याद रखने के लिए ऑब्वियसली इंपॉर्टेंट बट फोकस स्टार्ट किससे हो रहा है मेरा कस्टमर परस्पेक्टिव से इनोवेशन एंड लर्निंग पे इंटरनल बिजनेस पे जो मुझे क्या देगा फाइनेंस फिर वो फाइनेंस से वापस से स्टार्ट इससे होगा स्टार्ट इससे होगा फॉर एग्जाम्पल मेरे को मेरा कोचिंग क्लास चालू करने का है तो अगर मेरे को वो करने का है मेरे को एजुकेशन के फील्ड में आने का है तो इनिशियली तो मेरे पास ज्यादा स्टूडेंट रहेंगे नहीं मेरे पास चार स्टूडेंट रहेंगे एंड इट स्टार्टेड एक्चुअली For me or for that matter any other big classes you know, चार से चालीस कैसे होंगे When you are going to focus, where यो 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 So for me customer perspective, innovation and learning. So for me it can be how conceptual teaching I am giving to my students, how well prepared the students are. मैं उनका कितना test conduct कर रहा हूँ so that they are not feeling any issues in terms of giving the main exam. What are the uh, textbooks, notebooks that I am giving? What are the notes that I am dictating in the classroom? What are the revision lectures that I am giving after sales? So all of that is one, two, three, and who who are? Tabhi to mujhe ye mila. Are you understanding? So what is that? So I will have to keep a, have a vision and strategy for what? For customer perspective, innovation and learning, and internal business perspective. So customer perspective, jo mera sabse pehla hai. What is that? That is. बेस्ट ऑन गोइंग आफ्टर सेल्स ऑन गोइंग एंड आफ्टर सेल्स सर्विस नया प्रोडक्ट ऑन टाइम डिलीवरी प्राइस क्वालिटी सपोर्ट एवरी थिंग हैज टू बी स्पॉट ऑन सपोज आप कोई होटल में गए खाना खाने के लिए छोटा सा एग्जाम्पल लिया वहां पे बैठने के अरेंजमेंट यू लुक एट दी एम्बियंस यू नो वॉट इज न्यू इन दी एम्बियंस तो वो एम्बियंस कैसा है आपके पास वेटर कितने टाइम में आ रहा है आपने उसको ऑर्डर दिया तो वो कितने टाइम में वो डिलीवरी लेकर आ रहा है ऑल ऑफ दैट इज व्हाट मैटर्स कस्टमर सपोर्ट पिकअप एनी इंडस्ट्री तो मैंने ऐसे ही एक रेस्टोरेंट इंडस्ट्री को पिकअप किया होटल इंडस्ट्री जहां पे आप रहते हो उसको पिकअप करो स्टार्ट थिंकिंग फ्रॉम दैट एवरी बिजनेस विल है कस्टमर परस्पेक्टिव 
thing from that angle. एक bank, bank के लिए भी customer perspective होता है. So वो bank के लिए customer perspective है कि कितना जल्दी उसका सब काम हो रहा है. When you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, entertaining your customers, all of that needs to be seen at customer perspective. So best ongoing and after sale service. इसमें आ गया price कम होना चाहिए competitor से. But at the same time क्वालिटी भी डिलीवर करना है और दे के छोड़ना नहीं है वो कस्टमर को पकड़े रहना है कैसे भाई गिविंग आफ्टर सेल सपोर्ट दैट इज व्हाट आई एम डूइंग ओके सो कस्टमर पर्सपेक्टिव सो प्राइस कॉम्पिटिटिव क्वालिटी बेस्ट सपोर्ट ऑलवेज देयर एंड आपका कस्टमर पर्सपेक्टिव गेम खत्म हर एक इंडस्ट्री के लिए सोचो वो तुम पे छोड़ता हूं मैं और हर एक आदमी सोचता है ना मेरा खुद का बिजनेस होना चाहिए और फिर वो मेरे बिजनेस में मैं ये करूंगा मेरे कस्टमर के लिए वो करूंगा ऐसा करूंगा वैसा करूंगा ये बैलेंस स्कोर कार्ड वो ही है तो कर अब ऐसा सोच और कर इज वॉट दिस होल थिंग इज ट्राइंग टू टेल यू देन कम्स माई इनोवेशन एंड लर्निंग क्या नया चीज लेकर आ रहा हूं मैं मेरे बिजनेस में वीडियो लेक्चर इज अव कॉन्सेप्ट Now I am delivering a lecture in Mumbai and the whole India, probably the whole world, because there are uh, people giving CA exams in Dubai, in Nepal, in in Middle East countries. So, sab jagah ye cheez ja raha hai. There is innovation that is involved. What are the new things that I am coming up with? What are the, so the notes that I am probably giving you? What is there? So it is synopsized, but at the same time covering all concepts. Pura PM cover ho raha hai. So there is innovation and learning. Har ek business ke liye. अपन लोग मालूम है होटल में खाने के लिए वो जोमेटो पे देखते हैं तो सबसे पहले अपन देखते हैं क्या एम्बियंस है क्या नया है ये इधर जाने के लिए सो so, कोई होटल होता है 38 फ्लोर पे तो वाओ व्हाट आर एम्बियंस या फिर किसी ने जेल का कॉन्सेप्ट डाला है किसी ने बॉलीवुड का कॉन्सेप्ट डाला है सो दैट्स वॉट यू नो इंट्री इट इंटरेस्ट एंड विल गो देर इनोवेशन एंड लर्निंग टू अचीव इट्स विजन ऑन हाउ शुड अंपनी सस्टेन टेक्नोलॉजी डालना पड़ेगा आर एंड डी लीडरशिप ऑल ऑफ दीज विल बी required and i think the best example here is your apple steve jobs is no more but look where he's taken his company he's taken his company 50 years ahead of you know what he wouldn't have thought about 50 saal tak wo abhi nahi bhi hai to fir bhi uska company sustain karne wala hai just read the two days ago before the cash reserves of apple are more than probably what cash reserves uk and canadian government canadian government have that's huge that's huge that is only possible because of this the day he launched iphone and that is where he changed the way things work anyways so innovation and learning and that's how you know mobile companies will also have to evolve lastly internal business this is your process you know having a streamlined process is very important acha product bana apple ne बट अगर वो डिलीवरी नहीं कर पाया या फिर वो वापस से प्रोडक्शन बराबर नहीं हुआ या फिर हीटिंग इशू हुआ देन एवरीथिंग इज गो गोस फॉर अ टॉस सो यस इनोवेशन था प्रोडक्ट में बट एक प्रोडक्ट में इनोवेशन नहीं ऐसे मुझे और 10 मिलियन प्रोडक्ट्स बेचने हैं ना तो वो सब प्रोडक्ट्स में वही चीज एकदम सिस्टमेटिकली स्ट्रीमलाइन होनी चाहिए दैट इज ओनली पॉसिबल व्हेन यू हैव अ सिस्टमाइज्ड प्रोसेस व्हिच इज इंटरनल बिजनेस एंड दैट इज व्हाट एमएस धोनी नाम तो सुना होगा ही यूज्ड टू से कि आई वांट टू डेवलप अ प्रोसेस और वो प्रोसेस उसने डेवलप किया उसके बाद ही इंडिया 2011 का वर्ल्ड कप जीता था सो दैट इज दैट ऑब्वियसली इज क्रिकेट बट दैट्स व्हाट कैन बी इंप्लीमेंटेड इवन इन बिजनेस एंड दैट इज व्हाट नॉर्टन एंड कैपलर नॉट ट्राइंग टू से टू सेटिस्फाई इज कस्टमर फॉर इट स्मूथ फ्लो ऑफ बिजनेस प्रोसेस सो से फॉर एग्जांपल मेरा क्लास है सो हु इज हैंडलिंग द इंक्वायरी द टाइम टेबल एवरीथिंग हैज टू गो ऑन वेरी स्मूथ सो दैट स्टूडेंट्स आर हैप्पी so to satisfy its customers of its smooth flow of business process a product love product me efficiency love all of that and once one two and three are taken care of fourth will automatically be taken care of financial perspective ka fir tension nahi hai fir finance aayega again i am not saying ho gaya kaam fir wo finance ko bhi properly manage karna padega तो कैश फ्लोज आया है वो कैश फ्लोज को कैसे आप मैनेज करते हो कितना उसको री इन्वेस्ट करते हो इन आर एन डी कितना अपने पास रखते हो ऑल ऑफ दैट विल आल्सो बी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दीज आर द फोर पर्सपेक्टिव्स हैविंग अ ब्रॉड विजन एंड स्ट्रेटजी व्हिच विल बी इंक्लूडेड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ बैलेंस स्कोर कार्ड फाइनेंशियल पर्सपेक्टिव कस्टमर पर्सपेक्टिव इनोवेशन एंड लर्निंग इंटरनल बिजनेस पर्सपेक्टिव आई होप things are clear so if a question on balance score or theoretical question is asked ensure that you are uh, coming up with this so that things are smoother
Okay, now theory aspect is over, coming to the practical aspects of balance scorecard. So there are two practical aspects of balance scorecard. One is given through section C. So if you observe this chapter 9, profitability analysis, ka jo section C hai. That section C is covered by around 10 questions all on balance scorecard, practical, case law kind of question. So what they, they, they are asking you is, they have given you certain industries and they are asking you, Okay, wo industry ka business, pers uh, na, business and learning, innovation and learning perspective, business process perspective kya hoga, uska financial perspective kya hoga, uska customer perspective kya hoga. So first example they have started with the hotel industry. So hotel industry ke liye kya ye char perspective honge, ye char perspective ke andar ke do ingredients kya hone chahiye. Ek supermarket ka liya hai, to demand ka example soch lo, uske liye kya hoga, credit card ka liya hai, bank ka liya hai, telecom ka liya hai, all of that. They have just given as examples. Very, very important. All you have to do is just read through it. Keep my explanations in mind and accordingly come out with your own perspective. Zaruri nahi hai, just you have to uh, write what they have given here. If you have your own, that is also more than welcome. So you can just get an idea from there as far as section C is concerned. All of those questions are there. What we have discussed practically in our theoretical aspects. All right. Now, the second aspect of balance scorecard is, is this. So, here, when you are showing the financial perspective to your stakeholder, that basically is divided into three parts. So, what is your operating profit vis-a-vis -vis last year? We have done something called a standard costing. So, standard costing mein to apan log pehle ek standard bana lete hain. Aur fir baad mein actual ko wo standard se apan log cross verify karte hain. Correct? Here, for me, the standard is my last year. So, last year ka actual becomes a standard for balance scorecard and vis-a-vis -vis I will compare it with my actual figures of this current year. So last year which becomes my standard, same, same, last year's actual become my standard and this year's current is what I am going to analyze. So I am going to analyze that increase or decrease in profit in terms of a growth perspective, price recovery, price perspective and a productivity perspective. So for that we can refer one question. If you refer question, November 2016, question number 1A was from this aspect. You never know, it can be asked again. So, if it was 1A, that tells you the importance or the magnitude of this chapter. So, on that note, we, will, we can take any question, all are same, but we are selecting question number 8, Aditya Decors Limited, Adi, A-D-L. So, Aditya Decors Limited ka ek question hai, they have given you all the data. So, so, if you look here, if you look here, 13, 14 hai, 14, 15 hai, theek hai na? So, here, so, jo, jo bhi pura data diya hai, tum logo page 9.24 of your gray PM, you will be able to see all of this information. Based on that, we have to find out growth, we have to find out price, we have to find out productivity, we have to find out that, based on that. So first is the growth perspective. Every perspective is divided into two parts. One is the revenue aspect and the cost aspect. So first is the growth perspective. Uska revenue aspect, matlab, can I say sales? Sales mein kitna bada hai, sales kitne se bada hai, how much has the sales increased by in terms of last year and current year. So current year sales mera is 4,30,000. Current last year sales is 4 lakh. So what is the revenue increase? on account of growth in sales. Now this is multiplied by sales price of last year. So students usually have this confusion ki sir last year ki current year ke saath hona chahiye na. What they are trying to interpret here is only on account of growth what is the net profit that you have contributed to. Agar idhar mein sales price se bhi multiply karunga na to it is like a combination of growth plus price. I don't want that. I just want to understand ki growth ki wajay se मेरे output के growth की वजह से मेरे profit को कितना impact दिया है उसने you know try and understand this this whole all of the formulas that we are going to do is working on this fundamental so it will confuse you you have to come one step back and then you know think from that perspective so यहाँ पे 30,000 30,000 का मेरा sales बढ़ा है उसकी वजह से मेरा कितना revenue पे impact आया है not through revenue पे नहीं मेरे net profit पे not through again Selling price of last year, uh, of current year, but selling price of last year. Ye last year, wo main constant rakha, usko main focus hi nahi karo. Focus hai ki mera kitna growth hua hai in terms of the sales quantity. So that, that's what this point tells me. Then comes uh, the second aspect of growth, which is 
यूनिट्स ऑफ इनपुट रिक्वायर्ड टू प्रोड्यूस करंट योर आउटपुट इन लास्ट ईयर थोड़ा ये भी स्टूडेंट लोग को कंफ्यूजिंग लगता है व्हाट इज दिस एन एक्चुअल यूनिट्स ऑफ इनपुट फॉर प्रोड्यूसिंग लास्ट ईयर आउटपुट तो ये तो एकदम सिंपल है सो अगेन लास्ट ईयर का मेरा आउटपुट कितना था 24 फोर लैक सो सर इधर देखो ना वो लोग ने इनपुट दे दिया डायरेक्ट मटेरियल कंज्यूम इज योर इनपुट ट्वेंटी फोर तो उसको सीधा ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक के साथ कंपेयर करो ना नो सी डेट इज वेर वी आर यू नो मेकिंग अ ब्रिज एक तो है ये मेरा ट्वेंटी फोर जो मेरा लास्ट ईयर का मटीरियल का इनपुट है दूसरा है मेरा ट्वेंटी फाइव लैख टेन थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फाइव लैख टेन थाउजेंड जो मेरा करंट ईयर का मटीरियल इनपुट है देर इज अ ब्रिज दैट आई एम कनेक्टिंग देम टू सो फर्स्ट देर विल बी अ कंपेरिजन ऑफ दिस एंड दिस देन देर विल बी अ कंपेरिजन ऑफ दिस एंड दिस सो यू नो इन ग्रोथ एस्पेक्ट यू आर कंपेरिंग दीज बोथ एंड इन यूर प्रोडक्टिविटी एस्पेक्ट यू विल बी कंपेरिंग दिस आई होप एम क्लियर बट वॉट डज दिस मीन Units of input required to produce current year output in last year. इसका मतलब कि अगर last year के हिसाब से ही मैं चलू तो कितना input consume हुआ है तो यहां पर आई सी दैट चार लाख यूनिट बनाने के लिए अज्यूमिंग प्रोडक्शन एंड सेल इज सेम चार लाख यूनिट बनाने के लिए ट्वेंटी फोर लाख इनपुट का यूज हुआ है सो ट्वेंटी फोर लाख डिवाइड बाय फोर लाख सो कहना ही से इतना मेरे को एक आउटपुट बनाने के लिए छह इनपुट यूज हो रहा है एक आउटपुट बनाने के लिए छह इनपुट एक आउटपुट बनाने के लिए छह इनपुट मेरा यूज हो रहा है अब मैंने ये बात चार लाख तीस हजार का आउटपुट बनाया है तो मेरे को कितना इनपुट यूज होना चाहिए दिस इज वॉट इंटरप्रिटेशन दिस मीन यूनिट ऑफ इनपुट रिक्वायर टू प्रोड्यूस करंट ईयर आउटपुट इन लास्ट ईयर सो दिस विल बिकम ट्वेंटी फाइव लैख टेन थाउजेंड and that is what you will compare input price of last year i think is given as uh, 470 and this is what will give you the growth aspect and as i told you this aspect becomes 25 lakh 80000 my bad 25 lakh 80000 is what you will get here this is the comparison ab yahi main jab main productivity pe jaunga just give me a moment price ko apan फिलहाल स्किप करके प्रोडक्टिविटी पे आ रहे हैं तो एक्चुअल यूनिट्स ऑफ इनपुट यूज्ड टू प्रोड्यूस करंट इयर्स आउटपुट कितना है 25 लाख दस हजार कंपेयर देयर विद यूनिट्स ऑफ इनपुट रिक्वायर्ड टू प्रोड्यूस करंट इयर आउटपुट इन लास्ट इयर 25 लाख 80,000 नाउ देयर द इनपुट वाज ऑफ लास्ट इयर इनपुट प्राइस दिस इज 485 सो होल कंपैरिजन इज डन दिस इज कंपेयर्ड एट 470 लास्ट इयर का भी आ गया दिस इज कंपेयर्ड एट 485 current year ka bhi aa gaya and everything in terms of productivity in terms of your growth can be seen with visible eye this same logic is to be applied for labor as well this question also has labor so labor ke liye bhi ye fundamental apply karo you will get the answer fir baad mein fixed cost ke liye directly fixed cost of last year 1.6 160 lakhs probably we'll just write 160 lakhs here so ek to hai 160 lakhs aur dusra hai 176 लाख दोनों का 16 लाख एडवर्स ज्यादा हो गया सो दैट इज हाउ इट वर्क्स फॉर प्रोडक्टिविटी ऑफ फिक्स्ड कॉस्ट अब आ जाते हैं अपन लोग प्राइस के एस्पेक्ट पे सो प्राइस के एस्पेक्ट में सेलिंग प्राइस ऑफ करंट ईयर इज 4325 माइनस 4175 एंड करंट आउटपुट सोल्ड इज 4 लाख 30000 तो ऑटोमेटिकली यहां पे मेरा रेवेन्यू एस्पेक्ट इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्राइस हैज बीन टेकन केयर ऑफ ये जो मेरे को प्राइस की वजह से जो चेंज चाहिए था ना वो मुझे पता चल गया यहाँ पे एंड एज फार एज कॉस्ट इज कंसर्न इन प्राइस इन करंट ईयर इज फोर एटी फाइव वेर एज इन लास्ट ईयर इट वॉज फोर सेवेंटी इंटू यूनिट्स ऑफ इनपुट रिक्वायर टू प्रोड्यूस करंट ईयर आउटपुट इन लास्ट ईयर सो दैट इज वॉट वी हैव ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड एज ट्वेंटी फाइव पॉइंट एट लैक्स एंड दैट इज हाउ दिस फुल प्रॉब्लम विल वर्क आउट टू बी देन बेस्ड ऑन दिस यू कैन रिकनसाइल सो रिकनसिलेशन कैसे बनेगा लास्ट ईयर का मेरा स्टैंडर्ड है ये बार का मेरा एक्चुअल है सो आई विल स्टार्ट विद माई स्टैंडर्ड तो स्टैंडर्ड का जितना भी कॉस्ट है वो स्टैंडर्ड जो लास्ट ईयर का जितना भी कॉस्ट रेवेन्यू जो भी सेल्स माइनस कॉस्ट करके नेट प्रॉफिट आ रहा है वो नेट प्रॉफिट कंपेयर विद करंट ईयर का जो भी नेट प्रॉफिट है एंड द डिफरेंस विल बी ऑल एडिशन एंड डिलीशन बेस्ड ऑन एडवर्स एंड फेवरेबल एंड द थिंग्स विल रिकनसाइल I hope you have understood. So that's how the question works. So there are one two questions relating to this. You can follow them, and things will be pretty much.